Hello, my dog. Hello, my darlings. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you're all doing well today. This wonderfully uh, suspicious, you know, unusually warm Sunday uh, evening, and uh, yeah, I hope you're all doing well because I thought the summer was over when it came to Britain, but it appears the summer is come back to give us one last wave, letting us know what we missed in 2020 by basically working from home and being indoors all the time because we're not allowed to go out. And that brings us to um, to the main topic of this evening. Uh, for today, although I wasn't able to make it to Speaker's Corner uh, due, to, uh, due to life having better priorities and I had better things to do than to go to Speaker's Corner, uh, it may be the very last one as we know it, at least... Uh, at least in in the way it normally is. Now, some people are this. Uh, you know, there were some words in the grapevine about people showing up in their little groups of sixes or or individuals or, or having some distance. I don't know. I don't think it's gonna work. Uh, Speaker's corner will not work unless people are you know busy discussing. And you know, if there's a good discussion, you you can't expect to not want to listen to it when. You know, it's only, oh, well, there's six people in this group. Sorry, can't listen to this conversation anymore. It's just, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's going to look pretty pathetic. I mean, people who are going to go will be very desperate. Uh, I don't know. There's, I think some people are speaker's corner junkies. So um, so for those who are going to go beyond tomorrow, uh, beyond uh, this week, then I don't know. I don't think anybody is. I think it's pointless to to go to this uh, to that place when you can't really have it the way it's meant to be. But nonetheless, tomorrow in England, uh, Wales, and Scotland and Northern Ireland, I would imagine uh, Northern Ireland uh, will, they will all will all be starting what is known as the Rule of Six. And yeah, it, I mean, well. It's not stipulated exactly the dates, at least from the stuff I have. England and, and Scotland will definitely start tomorrow, the rule of six. But uh, it's nothing from the stuff that I've been looking at. It doesn't seem to indicate any dates for uh, Wales and Northern Ireland. So I'm not entirely sure when they are starting theirs. But there's a little bit of mixed messaging going on here, people. A little bit of mixed messaging. Because, and that's, uh, that's really... Uh, Really, what I I should have started with the song "Blurred Lines," <laughs> "Blurred Lines," because a, the that whole song is about women giving mixed messages, uh, and this seems to be another case of very much a mixed message situation. As always, England and the government of Westminster, being the wonderful consummate uh, professionals that they are, they have given us uh, yet more mixed messaging, as we can see here. Uh, Actually, I can see, but you guys can't. I do apologize. It seems that I should have, uh, I should have adjusted this accordingly. It seems this image. Let me, uh, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit for you guys. Yeah, a little bit better. Little bit better. It's uh, sorry about this. I didn't realize uh, this thing was gonna. Was gonna cause such a hullabaloo uh, with this image because uh, I thought the image was was fairly fairly easy to see. Uh, there it is. There's a better better version. Uh, I hope you can all see that one much clearer clearer. And yeah, so what do we have? We've got ourselves the a different rules immediately with Scotland. So we've got uh, the rule of six. It's maximum six people, no household limitations. Whilst in Scotland, maximum of six people from two households only. Uh, I wonder how the police are going to determine that. Uh, kids don't count. So that means if you have a, a thousand kids with you, I guess they don't count. If you could have like a hundred under the age of 12 children and it doesn't matter it's only adults so eff effectively from what i see here it's saying that in scotland you can have a, a kid's birthday party with like 20 kids and five adults chaperoning and you'll be fine 
It's just you can't have six more than six adults chaperoning a 20-kid party, uh, which which is interesting, which is interesting. Whilst in Britain, no, the kid in England, sorry, in England, kids do count, so everything. And it's a £100 fine if you are caught violating the rules. Mm. God forbid, God forbid if I invite more than six people to my house, we're all secretly sitting there huddled in our seventh people, <laughs> seventh member. Now imagine, imagine you, you have a little, like you call up your mate, you go, hey, John, uh, do you want to come around for a couple of cold ones? Yeah, sure, man, yeah, we'll watch, we'll, we'll watch some Netflix. And John comes around and John says, hey, I had Peter around mine while I was there. Uh, he was around mine, so I just so, thought he'd come, hey, Peter, John, great, three of us, beautiful. All of a sudden, uh, you know, your your brother calls and says, "Hey, dude, I want to, you know, what are you doing? I want to, you know, you want to come round mine?" I say, "Hey, I actually got Peter and John here. Why don't you come round mine, and and we'll uh, we'll chill here." And my brother shows up, maybe with his wife, maybe with uh, with uh, you know a mate, another mate. Bam! All of a sudden, we're five. We're five. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Suddenly, the girlfriend calls up, says, "Hey, I want to come round. Are you free?" Because uh, we want to hang out. It's a Sunday night. We can Netflix and chill. I said, I'm sorry. I'm already Netflixing, but we can't chill because, you know, there's no sex involved uh, when, when there's five other blokes here. But she'll come around. She'll bring a friend. Next thing you know, we're seven. Now what do we do? Now you're fucked. Before you know it, you're violating the law. I have to tell the missus, I'm sorry. You can come in, but your girlfriend has to hit the fucking curb. I have to I have to kick the bitch to the curb because she's going to create a, a, a legal issue because she brought a seventh person with her. This is absolute bullshit, man. Absolute nonsense. What kind of fucking... I thought I escaped Iran. I thought we ran away from Iran because of this kind of bullshit. But it appears that it is following us to the greater of the Britons. Uh, now... This is the this is the rule of six for Northern Ireland, which again it's even more confusion. So I can go to oh by the way, uh, the, the the rule of six for Wales is going to come up in a second. I'm going to show you that as well. But the rule of six for Northern Ireland: social gatherings. Rule of six: Northern Ireland, maximum six indoors, no more than two households. So you know, in England again, Peter, John. My brother, the girlfriend, no problem. Three different households in England, no worries. If we fuck off, decide to go on a road trip to Scotland or Northern Ireland, then we're screwed. Can't do that. This is absolute nonsense. And these are these are the rules. Apparently, these are the the rules of the rules of six. Now, this this actually lays out all the all the. Uh, different places at the same time. So you've got, this is outdoors at the top here. How many people outdoors? In Britain, six. It doesn't matter outdoors or indoors. In Scotland, six, unless you're under 12. So you can have 20 fucking kids or 20 11-year-olds. <laughs> you just can't have six over 12. Over th What happens if you have a party of six people, uh, sorry, 20 11-year-olds, but it's the birthday party of your of the of the person who becomes 12 at the party if one of the children suddenly turns 12 at the party are you all fucked <laughs> oh this is so stupid uh, so yeah if one of the children at a party that suddenly you're, you're it's all 11 year olds if one of them suddenly turns 12 then, then you all be you you're going to you know he's going to jail he's getting a hundred pound fine, uh, but in Wales they still don't give a shit. In Wales you can go to Wales and party like it's nineteen ninety nine, because <laughs> it's up to thirty people outdoor and in Northern Ireland up to fifteen people outdoors. So they're not following the rules of six on the outdoor side. They're only following it indoors. Now, uh, in uh, oh, sorry. Let's roll, scroll down. Now, uh, in, in England, they only want one meter. You only have to be one meter plus apart. In Scotland, two meters apart. Uh, uh, and in, in Wales and Northern Ireland, both two meters apart. Uh, but in England, you see, the virus doesn't get you in England. 
under two meters. <laughs> but it will if you go up to Scotland. <laughs> this is this is such bullshit because it's like as if the virus acts differently in different parts of the co the country. Like if I go to Wales, I can gather in thirty people, and the virus is like, oh shit, we're in Wales. We just crossed the England Wales fucking border. <laughs> I'm all, I can't infect you in Wales now because, you know, you cross the border, an invisible fucking line. <laughs> and the virus is like, whoa, whoa, chill, bro. Can't, can't infect you here. You can gather in 30 plus. But if you gather at 31, that's when I'll fucking have you. <laughs> it, the corona is like sitting there ready to pounce if one person joins the 30 crowd. <laughs> Oh, it's so fucking dumb. Okay, six uh, in England, by the way. Uh, this is uh, the rule of six still. Indoors. This is indoors. Six from multiple households. So you can have six people. You know, my scenario, of the, 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 the whole different households. In England, I'm good. But if you take a road trip to Scotland with that same group of six, you're fucked. Because there are three or four different households and you should have only been with the two. Uh, so you've got to kick a couple of people out the car. <laughs> If you go to Scotland, you have to kick, like, two groups out of the car. Uh, and then if you go to Wales, it's four households uh, can form one extended household. Uh, can form one extended household. I see. Four households can form one extended household. I have no idea what the fuck that even means. And how many people in that four? It's four households, but how many people? It doesn't even say. I'm presuming six. And then uh, in Scotland, six people from two households. So they're following pretty much the same uh, rule as Scotland. But they're letting more people hang out outdoors, which is, I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is so fucking stupid. This is so insanely stupid as if the virus will affect you differently in different areas. I mean, of course, we've all known that the virus doesn't affect Black Lives Matter protests. We know that COVID is pro-Black Lives Matter. So <laughs> COVID will never affect you if you're in a Black Lives Matter protest. But God forbid if you go into a anti-lockdown anti, uh, protest, then the COVID's all over your shit. <laughs> You got your COVID is all over your ass if you're at a at a Piers uh, Corbin event. But if you're at a Black Lives Matter, black, you know the COVID. You can see the COVID virus with his fist in the air, going, "Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, stop the violence, stop the move." It's not just the moment; it's a movement, baby. <laughs> it's probably saying it with a Chinese accent, though, which I'm not very good at. Hello, Miss Banksy. Hello, everyone in the in the chat. By the way, uh, by the way, the reason I started this shit. Um, is because um, there was nothing else on YouTube. No one else was doing a stream. There was no one posting any videos from Speaker's Corner today. I was bored. I was like, fuck this. I couldn't find anything decent on Netflix, Pornhub. I'd, I'd basically maxed out. I was, I'm, I'm like about, I'm about two strokes away from a, from a, a masturbatory coma. I was, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about two to four strokes from being put into a masturbatory induced coma. So I figured I'll do a show. Why not? There's just two, you know, there's only so much Pornhub you can, you can have in a day. I have to be honest. I think I've reached my Pornhub limit. <laughs> there's an upper limit, which I didn't realize I had. Uh, it seems to involve mostly soreness of the penis <laughs> and, and cramps in my hand. <laughs> Fucking hell. What am I saying? What am I saying? This sort of shit. If anyone else heard this shit, they would literally... My parents, my mom would slap me. Just slap me straight up. Um, if you're pregnant with triplets, does that count as four? Oh, shit. Shit. Bal. Bal. Ral. He's got, he's got an absolute... He's, 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 on, he's on a fucking roll here. Yes. What happens... If you're pregnant with triplets or even 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 twins, are you already walking around with three? <laughs> you can only have three other people approach you. If a fourth person approaches, if four people approach you, you're fucked. Um, so yeah, big up everyone in the chat. 1984, Daniel, 
Val, of course, Miss Banksy, my gorgeous darling, darling of darlings, my already m m wife, <laughs> ready-made wife. <laughs> um, so what else do we have? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we've, we've covered what I consider to be the ludicrous fucking rules of six or just inconsistent rules of bullshit. I mean, the, the whole thing is just... It's just insane. The whole thing is just fucking nuts. I don't know. I don't know what to what to say about this. This this part is is just absolutely fucking dumb, dumb as shit. Um, in the meanwhile, well, I, I don't. I mean, I've got a Streamyard link. What I'll do is I'll just pop it. I don't think I've got it in the in the description. I'm sorry for those of you who need it in the description. My darling, doing. <laughs> It's barely hanging on. I see. Uh, my my ding dong is barely. Oh, I see. Bal is also. Uh, I think Bal is bat wanksy style. I'll be honest. I'm not. I'd be surprised if Bal isn't wanksy, because uh, this is the kind of shit wanksy would put. Now, anyone who wants to jump on the stream, I put in the link, but it's not available just yet because I have a couple of other th things to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to cover a couple of other things, and then we shall go into it. Uh, and then anyone who wants to discuss any of the topic that we've discussed, they may jump on, and we can uh, we can discuss. Hello, Noah. Hello, hello, hello. A, a Noah, a, ch a chill command. What? Chill command. Her wins was streaming SC. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not sure what that is. Uh, streaming speakers corner. Hatoon was taken out the park by police. Oh, oh. Uh, I see. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I think Hatoon. I, I, I'll be very surprised. Banksy, talk about the Iranian wrestler. Oh my God! Yes. Ah, shit. You guys are right. I should have covered that as well. Uh, I do apologize. Um, I didn't really, um, really do that justice. Uh. Hold on, hold on. Let me at least get his photo up, so we can. Uh, um, I can at least uh, discuss this chap. Yeah, I, before before I go any further, I just want to discuss this very quickly. Um, this is an Iranian uh, Iranian wrestler uh, who was by the name of. As soon as it comes up. Uh, uh, what was his name? Iran is a wrestler despite international. Uh, okay, Navid Af Afghari. Navid Afghari, 27 years old. This poor lad was 27 years old. He was simply at a protest. That's what he was. He went to a Iranian uh, protest, anti-regime protest, uh, and Iran executed him. Uh, a few days ago, I think it was now, they uh, or a day or so ago, yeah, they executed him um, because of uh, bullshit charges of espionage or I don't know, it was some trumped up fucking charge. Iran, this is this is from just the mail. Iran ignores p uh, plea from Donald Trump to spare wrestler twenty seven was execu uh, uh, and executed wrestler twenty seven and executed him o over murder of state worker. During anti-government protests, so they 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 executed him, or they charged him with murder. But I guess some some worker uh, died in in a protest that he was in, uh, and they executed him for it. Although it would have at very least been manslaughter. Uh, but Iran said today it has executed Navid Afghari, Afghar Afghar, sorry Navid Afghar, a young wrestler for murder. He allegedly killed a security worker in 2018 during anti-government protests. Iranian state TV broadcast a 11-minute confession by the wrestler last week. The case sparked international outcry uh, with Trump calling for him to be spared. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure how much Trump's word is going to carry in Iran, considering he assassinated their, their greatest general. So I think Trump is not exactly the best guy to be to be <laughs> batting for your side if you're on death row in Iran. Uh, but this poor guy, he actually said, he stated also that his confession of murder was taken 
uh, after him being tortured. So it wasn't really a, a genuine confession. They tortured him until he confessed to saying, yes, he did it. And then they subsequently executed him. Poor lad. Look at it. It's a perfectly nice guy. Um, but that's it. That's why the Iranian fucking regime has to go. Fuck those guys. Like, straight up, fuck those guys. Uh, so, yeah. The Iranian regime is, yeah, it's brutal. They're assholes. And fuck those mullahs. Uh, that's why 40-odd percent of Iranians now, uh, you know, uh, say that they're no longer Muslim. That they no longer are Muslim. At, at if they're not atheists, they're certainly not Muslim. So almost half the country is declaring that they're not even Muslim anymore. Why? Because of these fucking assholes. Because of the way they are. And to be honest with you, I think people should not be Muslim for better reasons. But if mullahs of Iran are an example or, or a testament for you why you should leave the religion of Islam, then so be it. I'll uh, I'll take that. But yeah. So, Iran executed a poor innocent ch a man. But the thing is, he's he's not he's one of one of many. I mean, the reason I I be honest, I didn't have a massive, uh, like vi visceral reaction to this chap being executed is because I've seen thirteen year olds, I've seen twelve year olds, I've seen fourteen year old children being executed. Uh, I, I sh I'm gonna I'm gonna try and find some of those tweets. I didn't plan to actually make the story or t to talk about this chap right now. It's just someone pointed it out in the text. But there are I've I've posted and I've actually posted video. I've done a video uh, about Iran and during that protest uh, in 2018, where they were executing 18 year old uh, sorry 12 year olds and 14 year old children. They were shooting children. So if a 27-year-old gets executed in Iran, it's not an unusual thing. I don't even see that as a major event anymore because they're killing children in Iran. These fuckers are killing kids. 27 is is just it's just the way it is in Iran. It's just fucking every, it's, it's another fucking day in, in, in the life of Iranians right now. No, and you wonder why they're running like crazy to try and get to Europe and Britain and all the rest. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got issues. Of, I've got my own concerns about immigration. But I also understand why these people want to get out of Iran. I think the, the solution is to fix Iran. And we have to do it. We have to move to get rid of the Iranian regime. And there are people in the background working. But I'll be honest, I don't trust the Americans. I, I mean, when the Americans have a hand in something... I don't trust these guys as honest brokers. They're not. They're not honest brokers. They're not there for the good of the Iranian people. The history has attested to that. Go look at Iran Contra Affair. Go look at Mohammed Mossadegh. The history of of Iran is littered with with American fuckery, and American interference and mistakes. Britain, along with them, by the way, Britain isn't innocent of that either. So, if you want to come to me about why Britain and America are not helping Iranians fix their shit. That's because the Iranians should not and will not trust America and, and, and Britain to help them fix their country. Because they don't have a good track record of that. I'm sorry they don't. Uh, but as far as, um, as far as the next article, I, I know this is really depressing. I didn't want to go down this, this road, but it's a, it's a, it's, um, it's a shame. Um, I mean, it's a, there, are, there are Iranians. I, I don't expect anyone else to care. I, I only expect Iranians to care. I'm not, I'm not sitting around waiting for someone, to, to some Superman to come and rescue us. I'm waiting for Iranians to rescue Iranians. I don't, I don't expect anyone else to do it. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't expect anyone else to do it. Um, so for me, it's Iranians that have to. Hey, big up, Sam. Big up. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a depressing depressing story and i'm sorry this this poor lad age of 20 said so look at this he's a prime of his fucking life literally at the prime of his life his life was ahead of him at this point he was everything to to gain uh, a sportsman an athlete he, you know everything everything was supposed should have been in front of him his whole life was supposed to be in front of him and some fucking mullah passes judgment on him and and executes him like and 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 they execute him. It's just, what can you do, man? What can you do? It's a shitty fucking world sometimes, and I'm pissed at the fact that it is. Okay, speaking of shitty things, uh, 
this is a this is a clip from Britain's Got Talent where the group diversity does the the fucking uber bullshit uh, Black Lives Matter um, sort of dance off or whatever it is. There are autistic artistic fucking expression. Now I don't really give a shit what they do on Britain's Got Talent. I haven't seen that fucking show in like years, so I don't care. Uh, and don't get me wrong, diversity was very good when they first came out, and they still are pretty good. But this kind of bullshit politics inside TV shows and, and sports, I think is bullshit. I think it's nonsense. Fuck these guys bringing politics into uh, into these events. I don't expect the. I don't. I don't watch these things uh, for their for their politics. I, if I want to watch politics, I'll fucking turn on the news. There's 24 hour news cycles running. I don't need fucking a, 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 a footballer or a basketball player telling me about my fucking politics. And I sure as shit don't need a bunch of fucking dancers to tell me about my fucking politics. But I don't really care. I don't really care about that uh, because I don't watch that fucking show. But I know who does. A shitload of people who complained about 10,000 people on the last count that I've seen um, have, have uh, you know, complained to the uh, television ombudsman, uh, or the Ofcom, uh, about this, this shit. So it's clear most of the country, or at least, because you've got to realize the 10,000 that have actually complained that probably you know, you can you can expand on that to 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 you know to to expect about a hundred thousand or a million people uh, would have would have been pissed at this. It's just ten thousand of them bothered to actually write some shit and send it in. So you you got to realize most people don't even give a shit. Oh, actually, oh, Ned says fifteen thousand, so it's gone up. Uh, sorry, I, I think the last thing I saw was ten, but I didn't really look it up again. Uh, but yeah, so fifteen thousand people have complained. Now imagine 15,000 people who actually went out and complained. The amount of people who were like, fuck this show, I'm not watching it again, are probably in their hundreds of thousands. Uh, so, you know, if you get if you get some numbers like this in, in like these TV show type things, if 10,000 people complain, it usually means a hell of a lot more just hated it, but you just can't be fucked. I mean, you know, I'm making a video about it because ten, as I say, because fifteen thousand people actually complain. Uh, but the point is, this goes. This should be this should, fifteen thousand people, twenty thousand people, a hundred thousand people should be complaining about Black Lives Matter T-shirts worn in football matches, Black Lives Matter T-shirts being worn at NFL matches, kneeling at fucking NBA matches, and baseball and golf and snooker whatever the fuck the sporting event is whatever the fuck the entertainment event is anytime some asshole tries to virtue signal in front of you at some event that you're paying good money to watch because it's a sporting event or it's a non-political event then you should all complain because if you don't if you i mean that's if you disagree with the principle that sports and entertainment have no place for, you know, there should be no place in it for politics. You want to be all political? Go fucking go on a news show. Go on, go on fucking Sky News and BBC and CNN. I'm sure they'll fucking be more than happy to to sit down and listen to your bullshit. But I don't, I don't turn on the TV if I wanted to watch the news. If I wanted to hear what's going on in politics, I would find a political channel that I would, you know. Uh, that I turn on to. If I come on, you know, YouTube and I click on a cat video, I don't really expect the fucking cat to be dressed up in a BLM fucking t-shirt whilst playing with a ball of string. I clicked on the cat video because I wanted to watch a fucking cat. I don't care about if the cat's owner is a BLM fucking supporter or not. This is this is the same shit. I swear, I, I, I'm actually thinking about doing that shit now. Holy shit, I just came up with an idea. I'm going to dress up a dozen cats with BLM t-shirts <laughs> and record that shit. That shit will go viral. <laughs> what am I doing? I just come to, I just I just fucking realized what am I saying? <laughs> I should encourage that shit. I should be the one doing that shit. Oh man. But yeah, I mean it's bullshit, man. It's absolute bullshit. Nobody wants to fucking watch uh, their sporting event just m riddled with bullshit politics. Politics that you may or may not agree with. 
If I don't agree with your politics, I don't really want to fucking see your shit. I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, so, fuck these guys. Fuck anyone who's trying to bring politics into uh, into this uh, into into like other spheres. I mean, I know, I know the Oscar people. I know those fucking idiots. They always feel they have to make some kind of political statement because they've got, you know, they want a fucking award for pretending to be other people or the BAFTAs and and the and the Golden Globes. You know, I know they they make some sort of political statement in their fucking bullshit speeches, but I can I can believe it or not, I can live with that. I can accept that shit. I I can kind of let that one go. But if it's a staged and a production and all that shit. Fuck these guys. Um, but anyway. Snails lives matter. That is that is true, Daniel. I should dress up some snails with BLM. Just get a bunch of snails. Just write BLM on them with a Sharpie. You piss off everyone. You piss off the... The, 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 the BLM movement, you piss off the Peter animal rights people because you've clearly violated that snail's shell. <laughs> and the vegans, you could, you know, in one act of, of, of <laughs> defiance, piss off a whole range of fucking people. <laughs> You'll have half the world hating your ass. <laughs> uh, but anyway, okay. Okay, I'm done with the with the BLM people giving us more bollocks. I'll be honest, this to me this sort of shit is just going to further and further push people away from BLM. In a weird way, you got you you, you got to be sort of happy because these people are encouraging people to move away from BLM. They're encouraging people to uh, to to just, you know, to get pissed off because what what they're going to do is they're going to oversaturate this shit. They're going to oversaturate it. And then people are like, fuck this thing. It's like, it's everywhere. I can't fucking get away from it. It becomes boring. It becomes uh, uh, mind-numbing. And people will just switch off, which is, which is perfect, really. Because ultimately, they'll just die. Them, they'll kill themselves. Mm. Sorry, I'm drinking some uh, blackcurrant Ribena. It's good. It's very good. Okay, now... For my final segment of my rant, uh, how long have we have we rant, been ranting so far? I'm not sure. I don't want to pull a Raj. Um, okay, we're like 30, 36 minutes in. We're good. We're good. This is a good ranting timetable. I don't really want this show to become like a fucking seven-hour shit show. So we're in, a, we're in a good ranting zone. Okay, for the final segment of this rant... I would like to bring you to um, to this live stream. Now, I was I have already downloaded it because I fear either YouTube or SEO will take this offline. But it appears to be still be running, so um, that's that's good for all of us. Uh, so I'm just going to play it straight off her YouTube channel. Now, if you don't know Sia Live, she runs a YouTube channel called Speakers Corner um, something. Speakers Corner. Shit, I can't I can't read it. It's too far away. Hold on, Speakers. Oh. Bollocks me. Why is this thing? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, something something about Speaker's Corner. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I think I have to readjust this, uh, this thing again because... Although, you guys don't really need to uh, actually listen to what she's saying. Yeah, sorry, you don't need to see what she's saying. You just need to listen to it. So it's not a, it's not that bad, but... Let's, uh, let's, let's bring it in. Let's bring it in. I'm not even sure what the fuck I'm doing anymore. I swear to God, what is happening? What have I become? I'm re-evaluating my life, people. Re-evaluating a lot of things. Uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of fuckery. Uh, what is this? What is this thing? What is this thing? Sorry, guys. I'm just going to... I, I don't even know what that is. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me just see. I, I don't know what that is. Let me see. Ah. It's a background image. Okay. Fuck it. 
We're good. We're good. Okay, you guys can see it. Speaker's corner, whatever the fuck she's saying. It's a speaker's corner something. Okay, that's what it is. It's just speaker's corner something. Let's just go with that. Because I can't actually see her whole fucking uh, page. It's been happening. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me see. Unmasked. There it is. Fucking unmasked. Finally. Okay. So anyway, let's uh, let's listen to this. Now, I will quickly, for those of you who are uninitiated or have been living under a speaker's corner fucking rock, uh, this stems from Raj and Raj's uh, antics at the park about Ali Dawa and nine-year-old girls being fully grown adults so they can get married. All of that shit, and 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 uh, Raj having a bunch of people Photoshop the face of his sister and mom and everything on all sorts of different depraved sort of imagery, uh, the, the, you know, uh, de desecrating the holy temple of Sikhism in their images. So these are Muslims who are desecrating uh, Sikh uh, religious symbols. Of course, if a Muslim, a non-Muslim does it, the Muslims lose their shit and they start talking about how they're going to behead and kill and attack people, which, again, it appears that Tatoon was attacked again or, or, or escorted out by the police today for Muslims' sensibilities. So when Muslims lose their shit because their Quran and their Muhammad pedo prophet has been fucking defamed, uh, it's okay. It's okay because, you know, it's, it's just Muhammad, right? Muhammad, uh, sorry, it's it's not okay because Muslims will lose their shit and they'll try and kill you. But if uh, uh, if non-Muslims, if Muslims defame non-Muslim idols and holy scriptures and holy temples, well, that's fucking fine because well, it's Muslims doing it, right? I mean, Muhammad himself is the number one. De desecrator of idols he went into the Kaaba the Kaaba was a idol worshipping temple it was a temple of the, pa the Arab pagans he destroyed their idols and replaced it with his idol the Quran and, and, and Allah and that fucking black stone and all the other idols that he has now told them that they should worship so Muhammad is the first desecrator the number one desecrator in Islam, as far as his other idols are concerned. So when Muhammad does it, and, and the guy last week said to me, well, Muhammad did it because he conquered Medina, uh, Mecca. So it's okay if you're a conqueror, right? If I come over, destroy your shit, take over your country, I can just burn your fucking idols to the ground. And it's okay because I'm the conqueror, right? So why do you Muslims bitch when, uh, when America goes and bombs the living shit out of your countries? Don't cry. They're conquerors. They've come over. They've taken your shit. Why are you? Why are you? Con why are you crying? And when you're in Britain, you're the Britain. British Britain is at the very minimum a Judeo-Christian. Although it's a secular nation, it was founded on Judeo-Christian principles, or it's had Judeo-Christian principles for decades. Judeo Christianity and Judaism is what rules the day in this country. You Muslims don't have a fucking say. In fact, secularism is what rules everything. And I don't give two shits about your religious uh, icon iconography i fucking i will shit in your quran without a second thought it w i wouldn't even lose sleep over it i would just take a giant dump on a quran and wouldn't even lose a fucking i will sleep like a baby so because i don't give a fuck this isn't your muslim this is not an islamic country i should i don't have to respect your religious iconography in any shape or form just like Muhammad, who didn't give a shit about the pagan Arabs and destroyed the, 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 the statues in the, in the Kaaba. I can behave just like Muhammad. In fact, in this instance, I will use Muhammad's example. Muhammad's example is absolutely v valid in this instance. If he can destroy the, and shit on other people's religious uh, idols, I can do it to you Muslims. Kiss my ass. But anyway... <coughs> Now that you've all caught up with the antics of Speaker's Corner and Raj, this is Sia Live losing her shit. Well, I don't think she's, she's losing her shit. I will, I will rephrase that. She is dropping some fucking hard, cold, nuclear-charged truths on these Muslims. This is, a, this is a fucking... This is Hiroshima, Nagasaki, 
all in one fucking video as far as Muslims and cold bombs and, and truth bombs are concerned. So enjoy this, Muslims. And what other people are saying behind the scenes about me. And it's not that I really care about, but I'm just getting tired of this, like, sugarcoating certain stuff in Islam that are just, that you cannot sugarcoat anymore. These people that are tr pretending that they're defending Islam are like the most vilest people that you will ever see. Like these hangouts trolls, all they do is gossip, gossip, gossip. They jump on hangouts, they gossip, gossip, gossip about everybody, even including their own Muslim brothers and sisters. And I will tell you this, if you're so-called a religious person, first of all, you wouldn't be on hangouts. Second of all, you wouldn't talk about shagging your children, uh, shagging children and shagging mothers. And third, you wouldn't just go around and free mix. Like you guys are saying that you guys are so religious, but here you are in the back chats on call with foreign women that are need not even your mahram. Okay. But then you have like all this like righteousness talking about, oh, Mr. Pigeon, Raj, Raj is using you, Sia. Raj, Raj is doing this to you, Sia. Raj is using you as content. Raj is using to do this because he's an Islamophobe and he attacks Islam and you give him these videos. And you give... Isn't it madness? Isn't it madness that is actually a hadith, actually a narration where elderly woman was ripped into pieces because she had poetry and you guys are talking about me outing it while you guys are here defending it? Isn't it madness that you guys on hangouts are gossiping about me saying that i have mental health issues because i'm against pedophilia you guys that are talking about other people all freaking day and the number one topic is raj speaks corner who's actually autistic and who gets off of your beef you are the one that is feeding him with all these ideas. And then you want to turn around and call me a kafir and I should be killed and I should have this and I should have this done to me because I just express the truth. I exp it is madness to be killed for poetry. It is madness. You okay? It is madness to fuck a nine-year-old. Okay? Children should not be touched. Children should not be touched. I don't care what you say. Children are not consenting adults. You filthy pedophiles. You filthy pedophiles. This is what I have to say. And this is not somebody who's on drugs. And this is not somebody who's depressed or anxious. This is somebody with common sense, you filthy fucks that you are on hangouts. Okay? You should be ashamed. You shouldn't have children if you think a child is a consenting adult. You filthy, filthy pedos. And I don't care if Raj is the one that exposing it. You guys go smoke. You guys go fucking sniff coke. Okay. Go commit Zina. And go talk about shagging your mother while you claim to say Allah Akbar. And then you have the nerve to come online to talk about how you want to behead me. How I'm a kafir. How am I, how am I this and that for expressing disgust. That you think one of your dawah people says that he would give his nine-year-old daughter away to a fucking elderly person. Do you know how much child marriages are being done where children are being killed? Okay, just for having intercourse with an older man, they die because they cannot handle the impact. And you guys are so worried about Raj. You guys are so worried. Oh my God, Raj is going to do this to us. Raj is going to do that to us. What about your behavior? What about you cursing out his gurus? You're cursing out Hindus. You're breaking images of Hindus. Like, well, look what ISIS is doing in the Middle East. They are tearing up like old, old statues, old like things that have to do with arts that has nothing to do with worshiping God. And you're over here talking about how this little pigeon of the, of the UK is trying to roar up people against Islam. All these ISIS jihadists online. Okay, where were you when the cops were knocking on my door? Where were you? Where were you? You were on the back chat gossiping about me. Or you were talking to girls. Where do all these women come from? All these single mothers. I don't have any hatred for single mothers. But where do these single mothers come from all of a sudden with their channels? Huh? Where do all these women come from? Who's the one who is grooming all these women online? How huh? with Holeika, all of a sudden Hobeda, and now all of these other single mothers with their channel. Where do they come from all of a sudden? Pushing this propaganda. What are you doing to them? What is this brainwashing going on? And I even defended one prick's daughter. 
okay, that I said, like, how can somebody talk about another child in that way that you're going to, that you want to urinate on a person's child like that? How can you defend it? And that same prick is talking shit behind my back. You guys want to talk about my mental health? What about your mental health that you support pedophilia, you disgusting bastards? You guys are talking about shagging mothers, you disgusting bastards. And you are, well, I wanted to tell me, you don't even pray five, five times a day. You don't even pray five times a day. You don't even fast. You're over here online, gossiping, 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 gossiping. Shagging all these single mothers, doing all this crazy stuff. And you want to talk about me, my mental health, because I'm against this filthy shit? How is it okay to wanting to eat? Yeah, literally being a cannibal to eat these kufar people. Yeah, guys, um... If you want to see the rest of this, uh, I mean, it goes on for quite a long time. So it's, uh, it's, it's. I just want to give you guys a little flavor of uh, of the kind of shit she went down. Now, apparently, Raindrop is saying that uh, on Zubeda's channel, Reactionary and uh, M Stacks were defending nine year old marriage and their own daughters that they would give their own daughters up uh, for. Um, uh, for for marriage at nine, so you know it's clear that you know even though I try to uh, have Ali Dawa clarify what he says. Now, admittedly, I got to do a proper show where I devote a fair bit of time in in breaking down his that interview. I posted it on its own. I cut it out of the the four you know three four hour stream because nobody ever sees the three four hour stream. But I did want everyone to see that portion of the interview um, from that uh, from that day. Because once you start to analyze what he is saying, he is completely apologetic about nine-year-old marriages. Not apologetic as in I'm sorry. He is excusing what is nine-year-old marriages. And he's saying the only reason that they would not have nine-year-old marriages in Britain is because of British law. Not because that it's not allowed or it shouldn't be allowed and it's it's morally wrong. It's because of British law that they can't do it. But if Sharia was to be the place... Now, he, I asked him this. He never really fully acknowledged it. Uh, although he kind of... I don't know. I don't know. I've got to look at it again. But I don't think he fully said that, yes, under a... Prop, because I said, under a perfect Sharia law state, a perfect caliph... Um, Amir, uh, you know, pick your perfect caliphate, uh, caliph. Uh, I, I said um, uh, Salah Eddin, but I mean, you know, Omar bin Khattab, whatever the fuck he wants. Um, he could pick his caliph and under that scenario, would nine-year-old marriages be okay? And, you know, he would have to say yes. Of course he would, if he's honest. Uh, but I think he kind of fumbled and mumbled around it and he went into diatribe because he did, they don't, they don't want to properly answer it uh and it's the same with well i mean these these other muslims they're basically honest they're honest about their religion at least that's something and i don't know what happened on zobeda's show i don't watch you know thought tv uh but uh, i presume that uh, they were they were doing the same thing and the funny thing is zobeda is also defended it so because zobeda has to defend it too i've got video clips of zobeda defending nine-year-old marriages she, she, when she was on fucking uh, Valley Visions, she was like, oh, no, 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 it's, 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 the law has changed in Saudi Arabia. It's, the, the age limit is 18. Yeah, in May 2020, literally five months ago, four or five months ago, they made it uh, illegal. They made the minimum age limit 18. Up until, for 1,400 years, it's been nine. Only in the last five months, they made it 18. And by the way, uh, Afghan finest jumped, uh, Afghan finest, sorry, Afghan, he jumped on and he said um, it, they only made it 18 because of Western pressures. The only reason Muslim countries are uh, setting uh, uh, age limits for marriage is because of Western pressure. Because of America, because of Britain, because of Europe, uh, that Arab Emirates and Dubai and, you know, the Arab Emirate nations, Kuwait, Bahrain, uh, Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, they're setting these age limits because of Western pressure, not because of Islam. They're not doing it because Islam dictated to them that they should. And in fact, they get pushbacks from the clerics. They get pushbacks from the mullahs telling, uh, telling them they shouldn't put age limits on on marriage in muslim nations 
And in Pakistan, they had fucking riots when they tried to increase the age limit for marriage because of these things. So it is, it's not because Muslims and Islam wants age limits on marriage. It's because Westerners are pressuring them and they have no choice because the Western world, they have to deal with the Western world. They have to buy and sell to the Western world. They have to have you know commerce. And because of those pressures, they are now forced to change their, their ways. This isn't because of Islam. This is in spite of Islam. Saudi Arabia has an age limit of 18, not because of Islam, but in spite of its instructions. But these guys will never acknowledge that shit. And they will still defend their fucking pedo habits. And there's a reason. And, I, and Muslims keep saying, you know, oh, oh, how about all these white pedophiles? Yes, the reason we have pedophiles and we categorize them as pedophiles in Europe is because we have age limits and because it is illegal to have ch sex with p children or people under that age limit. In the Muslim world, you have legalized pedophilia. And when it's legal... You don't have a category for pedophilia, do you? How can you have a category for pedophiles when you have legalized pedophilia? When you can lawfully have pedophilic uh, uh, pederasty with, with young people. So that's why in the Muslim world that you don't have these, uh, these categories and you don't have all these slews. If now, now watch and see how... Um, Saudi Arabia and Dubai and, and the Emirate nations and, and Bahrain and Qatar and all these nations that have now set age limits. Now, let's see how they prosecute those who get married to nine-year-olds. Because it's there's one thing to have the, the actual law. The other thing is to actually act upon it. Start prosecuting people for having those underage marriages. Now we have to see what now we have to exp expose and we have to have people to expose if Saudi Arabia is actually pressuring, it's actually prosecuting and putting people in jail for having underage marriages to marrying uh, people under the age of 18. If they're getting married under the age of 18, they should be prosecuted. They should be prosecuted, you know, put in jail for statutory rape and they should have some kind of um, sex offenders list. But we'll see. We'll see when, when all of these things come into play. Because I can promise you, they may have set the, the they may have passed the law, but enforcing the law is an entirely different thing. We've already experienced that in Britain when it comes to Black Lives Matter versus COVID restriction protests, and we see how the law is not quite um, enforced equally across different uh, protesters. We can, we can see in America where the media still calls looters and, and, and arsonists fucking peaceful protesters. The man, the man, I mean, it's ridiculous. The MSNBC news reporter was standing in front of a burning building and he was like, well, it's still a mostly peaceful protest. <laughs> At what point do you want it not to be peaceful? Is it, is it when they start fucking, you know, coming down with, with clashing coughs and, and, and fucking, you know, 50 mil caliber <laughs> machine guns? Is it, is it when they mount machine guns on the back of pickup trucks? Then it's when it's, then it becomes uh, a non-peaceful protest. When they have mini guns, like all painless in fucking Predator. When they're walking around with, with rocket launchers and grenades. At what point do you say? that now it's not a peaceful protest because clearly burning buildings and smashing cars doesn't count as, as not being a peaceful protest. <laughs> it was an, an NPC. It was, it, was a, it was a peaceful protest. They just needed to burn that building down because they wanted to roast some marshmallows. I mean, God damn it, if you can't roast some marshmallows at a peaceful protest, then what's the point of going to a peaceful protest? And you need to burn the building down to get that good hot flame so that your marshmallows come out crispy. <laughs> of course. You can't you can't have a peaceful protest without some marshmallows. Oh fucking idiots. But anyway, uh as far as um as far as these Muslims are concerned, uh they they, they will forever be defending 
their child pederasty behaviors because they're Muslim, they're, they're, Mas they're prophet, you know. It is the, this is why I keep saying, I keep saying, people go, oh, bad Muslim, oh, this is a bad apple, that's a bad apple. By the way, by the way, this bad apple thing, people say that about the police too, but the, but the uh, Black Lives Matter protesters, they don't seem to give a shit anymore about a few bad apples. They're fed up with the whole fucking lot. And yet, we have to accept the few bad apples of Islam when Islam produces not just a few bad individual bad apples but whole fucking states entire countries of bad apples and we still have to keep going oh it's just muslims it's not islam it's just muslims how many times do muslims have to fucking do god awful shit till we realize maybe it's the thing that's influencing them maybe it's that 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 thing that's influencing them sorry um yeah yeah let's let's ignore let's ignore the fucking white giant elephant in the room and pretend it's just a few muslims because that giant elephant over there that's written like that's got islam written on the side yeah yeah that's not it that's not it because well you know clearly the muslims and the buddhists behave exactly the same right the muslims and the jains behave exactly the same they're just just as nuts just as crazy they do exactly the same um but anyway biden's gonna win <laughs> ned ned i think i think uh, you have swallowed you have not only swallowed the fucking uh, blue pill you have one as a suppository wedged firmly in your colon right now if you think biden's gonna win <laughs> But for those of you who wish to jump on the stream, I have opened a Le Panel. Oh, sorry, not that. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Um, Steve Atheist Steve's Twitter has been deleted or suspended or cancelled by Twitter. I don't know why. I don't know how. Uh, but apparently, it's no longer there. So, uh, so that's happened. Uh, I hope my voice is good. I think my voice is good. I can't. I can't be sure at the moment. I'm hoping voice sound is clear, concise, and on point. Uh, if you guys need it to be louder, allow. Let me know, and I will. Uh, I will endeavor. I will try to uh, try to comp uh, accommodate those of you. Okay, okay, it seems good. It seems good. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, but yeah, so guys, I'm gonna post uh, the the stream yard. I'll be honest. Unless if nobody wants to actually have a chat, discuss any of the topics that I have currently discussed, uh, I'm, I'm kind of done with most of the shit that I was gonna talk about. Um, but I mean, if anybody else wants to get in on this, feel free. Uh, put the rewind function on. <laughs> need to see the start of this i know never take the need the thing is i don't put the rewind on uh, until i finish the stream so that if the stream has any moments in which i i need to um you know any porn bombing any anything that was said that needs to be censored unfortunately i'm sorry never but i can't uh, take the risk these days you know youtube is being extra 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 shit uh, and I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to play within these uh, these these framework that I've been given. So um, so yeah, I can't I can't just put uh, put the rewind on until uh, the stream has finished, and then I can evaluate if there's anything. Evening, hey, evening, MC MC. The the link is in the chat. If you guys, uh, if anybody wants to jump on and chat. If not, I will simply end the stream uh, at 10 p.m., uh, which is about 10 minutes' time, because I've kind of had my rant. My rant is done. I don't really have anything else I wanna I wanna add or say. Um, I'm pretty much one of those guys who uh, uh, has about an hour in me, and then and then after that, if nobody else, if I can't talk back and forth with someone. Then it's kind of pointless. I'm just babbling at that point, I think. Uh, 
but um, but yeah so, so I mean I am worried I will say this whilst we wait for anyone to jump on the on the chat I am concerned about the authoritarian measures that is happening in this country now they are using the COVID as an excuse sure but uh, it's still you know it's still a, a serious concern for me uh, I don't know I don't know how that's how this whole thing's gonna unfold now we've got the rule of six small businesses are fucked I mean I'm amazed any any small business person can actually function in this environment this is insane the the whole situation is just nuts job markets fucked um, and these guys just continue to just stick it in our ass like on a regular basis they have no shame they uh, they don't seem to uh, they don't seem to have any any shame about just keep sticking it into our rectum on a daily basis uh, 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 big up AOC AOC what uh, Alexander Ocasio Cortez or is there someone else are you are you saying big up AOC as in you actually mean AOC Ned are you trolling Ned Ned is trolling uh, uh hey we have we have a caller is that MC? MC, uh, I can always rely on you, MC. How are you, yeah, MC? Yes, that's me. Good Hold evening. Me turn my can you hear me? One second. How are you, mate? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you, my good sir. I can hear oh, you. Oh, fine. Loud and clear. What have you... Oh, good. What have you say? What have you to say, my good sir, about uh, all the all the fuckeries that I? Is there anything about this particular thing that we that I talked about tonight, or anything else on your mind? Well, you mean uh, you mean the attempts to extend the rules of the lockdown, and uh, that is basically destroying small businesses and uh, yep. and the economy. Well, there was that. There was also. Uh, you know the Muslim thing, child marriage. We've got we've got a plethora of subjects. Also, Black Lives um, Matter protests or or people in the media or sports bringing politics into that. There's there's all of this. This is there's, there's a little little buffet of subjects which you can pluck. Uh, from. Yes, uh, I know. <laughs> but if you, if you want to speak about Black Lives Matter, uh, basically, that I want to deflect too much too much from it, but. It's it's crazy. It's funny, and it's uh, it's shocking to me that we have even Black Lives Matter in Poland. To, to be honest, they have desecrated the uh, statue of Tadeusz Kościuszko, and uh, and and it's ironic because the guy was the first uh, founding father of the United States and a Polish also war hero uh, that uh, that, that uh, wanted blacks to be free before Washington, before Lincoln, before before anybody. Yeah. Good, Yes, he was the first one to to to, to suggest that let uh, free the slaves. Uh, Washington didn't want to listen to him back then. And and now they're they're desecrating his statue. Uh, yes, the, 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 they are painting BLM, Black Lives Matter, in America and in Poland. Even that they have done it. But do they know who he people... is? Do they know what he tried to do? They don't know shit, frankly. <laughs> History. History teachings in America is is like uh, very poor, to be honest. Um, if if I would be complaining about anything and, and I would be uh, patronizing and Chauvinistic towards Americans, that when they would be saying some uh, some nonsense about history, I would be saying, "Okay, I forgive you because you are an American." Yeah, no, I mean, admittedly, um, I have to say um, they they actually desecrated some statues of abolitionists. In in, us, in in America as well, people you know people who wanted to abolish the the slavery, so like these guys clearly don't don't really sit and examine and think about like what these statue who these statues are. I bet, I bet half the time they don't even know who the fuck the person is. Uh, they just see a white person on a pedestal. You see, that's the I think that's the underlining issue is they yeah. see a white person above them. On a, you know, in a in a in a statue form yeah. or in in any other form. Uh, for them, uh, for them, the white people, I mean, I mean, they are our Mark Collettes. We are their Jews. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, they are they're just they're just out to destroy anything 
that even his I saw a video and and I I could find it on Twitter I I post I retweeted oh, it myself. Uh, one American have posted to me, but by the way, that they have destroyed some sacred Indian lands uh, in the United States. I mean, they have put graffiti on uh, on the memorials and uh, and on the graves probably of Native Americans, and th those damages probably are irreversible. Holy shit! Yeah. Well, this is what I mean. They're gonna they're gonna slowly slowly isolate themselves. They're gonna piss off so many different groups. Because they're just idiots that are just doing things. I This is what I see because I am seeing other countries now. I saw another uh, clip on, I think it was Twitter or somewhere, uh, of uh, or was it maybe Instagram, uh, of these, I forgot what it was, but it was a bunch of young people kicking the shields of these police officers and drawing graffiti on their shields. Uh, and the police were kind of like, you know, holding back. They weren't really, really interfering. I think they were protecting some of the, because it looked like they had some kind of statue or something behind them. So it looked like the police were protecting this, this statue. And I forgot where it was now. I forgot. It began with B, but it was definitely European. Uh, but anyway, I mean, they are just pissing off everyone slowly, slowly. And, <clears throat> and, and this this wasn't even like a Black Lives Matter thing. This was an anti police thing. They were like, oh, police brut anti police brutality, uh, and and it's like well, this country is like eighty ninety percent white or whatever it was. It looked like I mean the the people who were attacking the police were all white. I didn't see one black person. <laughs> anti police brutality. I would I would rather say to to be more accurate, it is it is provoking police brutality. <laughs> well, yeah. The funny thing is, by kicking the police, which is what they were doing, and throwing rocks at them. Yeah, they were throwing rocks. And one this girl tried to put, like, she went over the guy's shield, the police officer's shield, and tried to spray with the spray can. And the police officer just, just pushed the shield and just launched her across the fucking floor. Uh, and, and the funny thing is, the things that they're doing is going to bring p police brutality upon them. <laughs> yes. So it's uh, it's the irony that you don't want you don't want police brutality, but then by provoking the police, you're gonna get brutalized by the police, <laughs> and and the circle is complete. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, 1984 wrote in the text, there is BLM marches in Libya. Oh no no, there are no sorry, there are no BM BLM marches in Libya. I wonder why. I wonder why 1984. I wonder why there isn't any BLM marches in Libya. That's because most of those BLMs are in chains being sold at a fucking market. <laughs> That's probably why there are no BLMs. Because the black men in, in Libya are currently being sold for a handsome reward. <laughs> for a... <laughs> they're being they're having their fucking teeth checked to make sure that they're they're strong enough to be able to fucking do the manual labor that these fucking people want them to do when they sell them after they've bought them they want to make sure that the fucking slaves can actually handle the load so they're not marching for black lives matter because they're too busy fucking doing the bidding of their slave master in libya that's that's why that's why nobody nobody's marching for blm Fucking hell, man! And I swear to God, they'll probably dare to march for BLM. It 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 will be like, uh, the, 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 the tanks, armored uh, transport vehicles, uh, Kalashnikovs, and other stuff would be yes. involved, probably. <laughs> yes, exactly. Ah, oh, this is not enough white progressive liberals in Libya to be to use. But. Uh, <laughs> To be honest, uh, just a little bit uh, deflecting, I mean, uh, turning back, I'm sure that this type of, uh, of this war hero that I talk was talking about was destroyed by young idealistic women, because uh, I have seen, and mostly women, are in Polish uh, the Black Lives Matter squad. Yeah, yeah, I mean... I, I I think this is I mean, uh, literally white privilege, man. This is this is this is Western, not white, Western privilege. The fact that you have the time and the energy and the and the funds to be able to do this sort of shit, uh, whilst the rest of the world is too busy fucking trying to make a living just to be able to buy food for that yeah. week. Uh, if, but to be, but to be honest with you, those women are on their way. 
to uh, create a, a very unusual, or, or maybe I would say our own, basically, specifically Polish kind of a racism that will probably start to exist because of them. It will be not against blacks because we don't have any blacks in the country, but again, women, but again, women that are in the relationships, I mean, Polish women, of course, and girls, uh, were making out or doing anything or probably would even seen with, with a black guy, especially the one that behaves like the, the, the kind of a Black Lives Matter or, or, or basic hug. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's, it's on their way. History in Poland is uh, is something there and, and very important. And, and this this guy is one of the one of the uh, of, of a, a very central. <coughs> I mean, how to say it? Okay, this guy is one of the founding fathers of the United States, uh, and it will be not forgotten pr probably. I I mean. Maybe maybe it was guys, other leftist activists, but from my experience, they're mostly girls going and protesting well, when they were Black Lives Matter protests after this. Uh... Yeah, do you know why there are mostly girls? Because especially those incredibly aggressive, the more aggressive ones are the ones that are, um, uh, what's it called? They are, they're women because they know that it's socially unacceptable for a woman to uh, to get beaten up so even the police you know so even the police police kind of hold back from aggressively like beating the women or hitting the women and so the women are even more of an asshole than uh, you know any other sort of uh, uh group because the men they they kind of know they have to they can only push so far and then they're going to get I fucking know. slammed to the ground and they're eating fucking concrete. Um, but the women, they don't give a shit. So they'll just keep pressing on. I know. And and in Poland, especially, there is a very, this, the culture of, this, this culture of chivalry that, that basically is a border, borderline uh, simping. It's a thin line, a very, very mm. thin line. Yes. Listen, uh, Banksy. Yeah. It, in Poland, even uh, even the low 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 life alcoholics that uh, are on their way to to live in the card bo boxes or on the street, mm. uh, if 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 you be one of their friends, if you drink with them, of course, <laughs> uh, with them, and they but if they would knew that you have you're beating the shit out of your woman, they will only drink with you if they really have to, because, you know, being addicted to alcohol, they have to find somebody to drink with. But if they're going to have finally found uh, money uh, to drink without you, 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 you are even treated, treated by them like, like a <clears throat> pariah in wow. those moments. Yeah, of course, anyone, anyone who puts his hand on a woman, people, you know, especially chivalrous men or men of who've had good upbringings are going to be, you know, they're going to be disgusted by that individual. Because we we are generally most men are are socialized to recognize no you don't hit up women because women tend to generally be weaker uh, physically and and I mean as a rule we shouldn't hit anyone as as a, like civilized people but we all know men men we fight we we squabble but we generally are taught by our fathers and and uh, you know men in our family uh, you never put your hand on a woman but. Uh, women and nowadays the is even more dangerous. Yeah, but the problem is women nowadays, these feminist types they uh, they know that there's a social stigma over being over having a woman, you know, be hit in any shape or form. So they become even more aggressive and they take advantage of that, that social stigma uh, and, and are even far, you know, a lot more aggressive and, and basically an asshole uh to police because they know that the police are less likely to put a fist in their face. Now the funny thing is, the funny thing is, the I don't know if you remember in two thousand and I think eighteen or seventeen, uh, there was a there was a girl called they call them moldy locks. There was a girl with like dreadlocks at some um, Antifa versus Trump supporter kind of protest clash, and the 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 Trump supporters started to rush the the antifa bunch and 
the Antifa bunch were running, but then some of them got cornered off in various different corners. And this girl, who had a wine bottle in her hand, ready to fucking smash some uh, guy on the head with, she was like an Antifa type, and she had dreadlocks. Anyway, she didn't, she missed with that. I think she tried to punch this guy. This guy just turned around, saw her, and punched her square in the face. And she just went fucking down like a sack of shit. It just went boom. And the whole imagery was just fucking amazing. That these women who think they can go to these protests and that like, oh, no one's going to hit me. I'm a, I'm a girl. And other people, you know, I can just hit on, punch men and uh, hit them with bottles and shit. And nothing's going to happen to me. That fucker learned that day. No, there are lines and you cross a fucking line, you're going to get smashed straight in the fucking face. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's, that's really uh, some piece of shit, Viper stuff, to be honest, from, yeah. from her. Uh, no, I admit that uh, also, if a woman uh, or a girl, uh, uh, mature enough, will raise hand on me with some sharp... Uh, dangerous object and i'm going to basically see my own blood she'll get smacked she'll get smacked back yeah i don't care but what i mean is there is a line even men who are chivalrous and all that stuff they still have a line uh and so you know you cross that line too many times you're gonna get blasted in the face i don't give a fuck who you are uh so Yes, I know. So, yeah, sorry, I was just typing in the text at the same time. But, yeah, uh, chat shit, get banged. <laughs> man, man like H. <laughs> chat shit, get banged. And, yeah, the uh, you know, Ned, Bass Welshman, um, uh, Umbrella, and, and NPC, they all called their out Moldy Locks. Uh, is there, I think everybody remembers. Yeah, this is the Battle for Berkeley or Battle of Berkeley 2018. That's the one. Uh, where um, it was actually Lauren Southern uh, was in that battle, if you like. She was there uh, at the time. She was covering it. That's where I, I think I was watching her coverage and a few other people as well. Now, the funny thing is, if you notice, even though these Black Lives Matter shit is still kicking off and it's, you know, insane stuff is still going on, um, a lot of that, kind of antifa versus trump supporter conflicts have subdued have subsided a lot uh in 2020 admittedly because of the the corona thing we haven't had much in the way of like crazy protests uh but uh, um the antifa lot are the ones who are sorry the blm are protesting but donald trump supporters there isn't that many of them really sort of protesting against uh, BLM or against Antifa because I think the the, the Antifa bunch realized uh, that their Antifa antics are are not getting anywhere because there's Trump supporters and who, they're going to come out and they're going to challenge them and they're going to fight them but one thing they found and this is what the Antifa guys found and I think it's a it's a point of genius is they found that not a lot of people are going to march against Black Lives Matter. They may disagree with Black Lives Matter, but nobody's coming out protesting against Black Lives Matter because nobody wants to be seen as an open-out racist because Black Lives Matter or the Antifa leftists hijacked the, anti the Black Lives Matter movement. And so now anyone who wants to go against Black Lives Matter will appear completely racist. So all they have to do is yeah. if, if they say, I don't, I don't agree with Black Lives Matter, they're like, oh, are you racist? You must hate black people. So that's why you don't see a lot of anti, you don't see anti, I mean, I've never seen one single anti-Black Lives Matter protest. I've seen anti-Antifa uh, protests, anti-sort of leftist protests, no problem. I've never seen an anti-Black -an Lives Matter protest. Yeah. Well, one more time, once again, I have said this is like, this is the effect of the, <laughs> the distortion of the American uh, history teaching program in, in that country, whatever program they have. Be <laughs> because, uh, I, I mean, I, re I read about slavery, Jimmy Crow's, uh, Crow's and other things, and uh, I'm sorry to say, but 
No, uh, most white people did never have slaves. That, that, that's that's for, for reminding because a slave also costs immensely, and not everybody could afford such a thing. And most could not afford such a luxury to have slaves. But you know, the, the white guild is strong and kicking there. Uh, and not to mention that the, the, the perception is very. This is the American keeping up appearances, probably, that they don't, they don't just are so afraid afraid of it that they will not protest because they are afraid of the careers, their jobs, the social stigma, oh, yeah. social alienation. Excuse me. Oh yes, yeah, they they would they would never challenge, uh, even though ninety percent of people didn't have or couldn't afford slaves. Ninety percent of white people would never have owned the slave because it was like it's like it's like owning a ferrari uh you you're not gonna have 90 you know 90 percent of people can't afford ferraris 90 yeah. percent of the population can't afford you know aston martins and uh and and you know bugattis that's what slaves were in that period they were incredibly expensive commodities they were not just i mean okay they were not luxury items don't get me wrong but they were considered to be quite expensive commodities to have and unless you were extremely wealthy unless you were also a farm owner because you also had to have uh you know some sort of farm and plantation to be able to utilize these slaves otherwise if you're not doing any of that then how many slaves can you possibly have you you know for household chores you only need one or two people to be able to take care of the whole house uh, and, and in fact a lot of people were in, in indentured servitude so a lot of the cooks and the cleaners and stuff they were not just slaves they were also indentured servitude people white people white people who were f working for literally food because it was it was fucking horrible back then life was fucking shit for like 99 percent of people True, but but now the politically correct version of history in the West, also in America, it, it, it tells us that uh, whites never ever suffered in anywhere, <laughs> like, like like all those poor blacks and other colored folk. And that's, uh, that's, I mean, that that's yeah. for me is the root of the problem because it is not accurate accurately. Uh, taught and uh, frankly, uh, and people d d don't pay much attention and don't put ma much uh, much pressure on the accurate his history teaching. Yeah, that's well, that's why you you get that uh, silly concept like white privilege, uh, uh, systemic racism. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, of course, all of that, all of that absolute nonsense. Uh, the, the the other thing, the other, uh, it's just someone wrote in the text. Now, first of all, I want to, I want to say, I have removed, uh, blah, what's his name? Ah, oh, shit, sorry, let me just see, uh, blah, uh, ral, uh, bal, ral, his text. I'm sorry, I cannot condone such a text, although I find it hilarious, and I would chuckle to myself. But I can't actually have it on the stream and condone it. <laughs> I condemn in the strongest manner <laughs> what you wrote. Um, but as far as oh no no no, don't time him. As, as, did he write more shit? I don't know. I just I just took out the the text. You don't have to time him out. Nobody. He doesn't he doesn't need to be timed out. It's just that line of text I had to take out because that was just fucking terrible. But it's funny. I still, I still stand by the funniness of it. It's just YouTube is a bitch, and YouTube is a boring ass fucking old fuddy duddy nowadays. And I can't have anything that's even remotely edgy, but yet funny. I still acknowledge the funniness. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know, MC. If you're an admin, you should be able to read it. You, you'll be able to see it, but I can't read I'm it. Don't, don't read it. Honest. Don't read it out loud, though. Uh, but also there was. Um, uh, there was I'm not that in Banksy, so I cannot read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, uh, so L Falcon wrote this. Now, this one is kind of edgy, but it's, it's. I think, I think, I think we can fly under the radar with this one. It says, if an adult marries a nine-year-old and they get a divorce, does that adult get fifty percent of the toys in the settlement? <laughs> I want, I want the Barbie and the Ariel Little Mermaid dolls. You can keep, 
you can keep the fucking Elsa from Frozen <laughs> and, and and I don't know the, 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 the Ella from Sleeping Beauty or whatever the fuck it is um, oh, shit. That's, that's great to be oh, honest shit, man. that is fucking this is this is the insanity of Islam this is the this is the bullshit that these Muslims are defending that that if you get a divorce from a fucking nine year old wife that you've married, uh, you, you have to split the fucking Barbie dolls and and the little little Barbie's house and and the car. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is wrong with these people? And the cute teddy bear that she's hugging. <laughs> it's fucking. This is what I mean. These guys, they don't. Follow, like they don't this is the problem with Islam like today today actually there was a COE video uh, which let me see maybe I can maybe I can play a bit of it I don't know but there was a guy who's converted to Islam fairly recently and and he was talking to Ali Dawa on his Salam section about his conversion and how he you know converted and this and that and there was a few key moments in that conversation which was very interesting to me uh which was this man's sort of uh what's it called the things he was saying which were like yes yes i know now why you are a muslim believe me i know exactly why you in particular are a muslim because islam appeals to the simple mind. Now, let me see if we can, if we can, I'll, I'll <laughs> listen to it and then I'll pause it and, and, and sort of commentate and you can, you can tell me what you think as well, MC. Hi, everything. Um, about really... Actually, can you hear it? No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, I have to share no. my, uh, I have to do a, like a little stream yard screen sharing beforehand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to, I have to do it all properly now. Bear with me, bear with me. Let me do a screen share. I have to shuffle things around. Sorry about this. Okay. Uh, you should be able to see it now on the StreamYard link that I. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've shared my screen now. Yeah, now let me play. Can you hear it? About it actually... I know. Yeah, you've got the tattoos across my. A little louder and uh, fine. Ah, uh, I can't turn it any louder because this is the maximum volume because it's the shitty microphone. Uh, it's the COE's microphone. Unfortunately, I can, uh, I can hear the guy speaking to the mic, but. Uh, yeah, I'll. I'll... So it's very good. I'll do my best to try to uh, try to increase the volume. Uh, okay. Let me let me see if I can if I can increase the volume as much as I can. But we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what we can do with this. Okay, listen to what I what it's saying. Um, and at the time, the Catholic Church made sense. I think if I was looking at Christianity and I, I, I sort of heavily didn't look at any other religion, just. Okay, he's talking about he was looking to to sort of he was looking for a religion. That's what he was basically looking for, and the Catholic Church made sense to him. Christianity and Catholicism made sense. I thought if, if, if the Christian Church is true, then then they've got the best arguments for the truth. Um, so got baptized, thought everything was fine, bought into everything, the Trinity, and everything without really thinking too much about it, and then um, started coming across YouTube videos. <laughs> um, now, you see, he started to come across YouTube videos. This is why it's so incredibly important that people like uh, uh, Muhammad, um, uh, sorry, like uh, uh, um, uh, David Wood, Apostate Prophet, uh, all of these other people, uh, Atheist Republic, um, uh, there was a lady, something, Muhammad, I forgot her name, but anyway, all of the atheists, ex-Muslims, ex, -Muslims, ex uh, uh, sort of religious people or or even religious people who are critiquing Islam the reason why you know I hear a lot of Muslims 
a lot of uh, Muslims like Jordan M and, and a lot of new Muslims talking about, oh, oh, I can't, I don't understand why these ex-Muslims and ex-Christians or, or these people, they keep talking about Islam. I mean, if you're ex, just, just be an ex and stop talking about Islam. It's precisely because you fucking Muslims have YouTube channels that are constantly talking about and promoting lies about your religion and you talk shit about your, you know, promote absolute falsehoods about your religion in order to propagandize your religion and, and, and proselyze people into your fucking religion. So that's why apostate prophet is absolutely critical. That's why David Wood is absolutely critical. That's why DCCI and Hatoon and Soko Films and Atheist Republic, these people are absolutely necessary and they are 100% needed every day so that you fuckers stop conning people into this bullshit cult. The reason they exist is because your cult fucking exists and every day you're fucking trying to talk deluded simpletons like this guy here. And I, I believe, believe me, in a minute you'll realize why this guy likes Islam so much. Because simple people like simple explanations for the things that they find difficult in life. And there is a lot of simple people in the world. Um, Too much. I started talking to a brother at work who, who, who shared the... The oneness of God. Um, my research then sort of led me deeper into sort of like Old Testament and the, the prophets of old, um, and they all seem to have the same message: the oneness of God. Um, and and if you messed up, it was quite a harsh God. And I, you know what I mean? And um, I started looking at Islam, and for me, Islam. If you compare it to what the Old Testament prophets or what the Old Testament prophets were teaching, Islam sort of followed that line. Whereas for me, with Christianity, there was a massive change at some point. All of a sudden, there's yeah, you see, you see, this is the thing about uh, Old Testament and Islam. The Old Testament and Islam are very, very regimental, very dictatorial. It's 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 do's and don'ts. Do this, this commandment, that commandment. You were commanded to do this. You were commanded to do that. Islam has exactly similar sort of uh, regimental, almost militaristic uh, actions in it and behaviors. It regiments every aspect of your life. And there are people like this guy, like Jordan M, uh, Isa, all these other converts. They like that aspect of their life being regimented they want they these people would do brilliantly in an army if they were in the military they would be fucking at home it would be like a you know they'll fit like a glove because they want their lives to be dictated to them they want their lives to be regimented they find that simple they find their lives easy because I don't have to think about my life anymore. I get up, I know what to wear because I've been told to wear this. I know what to do in the morning because I have to pray in the morning. I know what to do in the afternoon I know because I've, I've been told. I know what to do in the evening, in the afternoon, at lunchtime. I know what to eat, I know what to drink. Everything has been prescribed to me. I don't really have to spend a lot of time thinking about that shit in fact there's a very good sequence in the film the fly the original one with uh, Jay, um, uh what's his name uh, uh goldblum jeff goldblum uh not yeah. the, not sorry not the original the original one like in the 1940s or 50s or whatever it was made it was the jeff goldblum one there is a segment where the the lady gina uh davis goes she's a reporter she goes to his flat or to his place where he's li he lives in the place that he does all his experiments and she goes to his closet and she finds six or five or six suits, identical, identical suits, same jacket, same trousers, same shirt, because she thinks that he's wearing the same clothes all the time. He's like, why don't you change your clothes? You're wearing the same thing all the time. He goes, no, 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 this is all new. He's like, why? He goes, what? He goes, well, I just wear the same clothes every day, so I don't have to th spend any time thinking about what to wear. I just wear... I have five or six identical clothing. He he mentions some scientists, I forgot, Newton or Einstein or someone else who wears the exact same clothes all the time because that way they don't have to spend any time worried about, like, clothing. Uh, uh, so this is the similar, similar sort of thing with Muslims. They have prescription for everything they do. And some people, they just want that simplicity. They don't want to spend... 
time thinking complex thoughts through christianity un unfortunately i mean this guy wouldn't even fucking come close to any dharmic religion he wouldn't even touch anything like buddhism and hinduism and shinto and and confucius confucianism <coughs> because they would be way above his cap capacity to to operate so he wouldn't even fucking be able to come close to any of that shit but for him even christianity is too philosophical it's too complex so he can't get his head around like the complexity of p potentially like the, the the trinity and how the trinity can potentially work uh, now the thing is this is why this is what i mean about muslims i don't believe in christianity but i can visualize and i can imagine how the trinity would work i don't have any problems with the trinity the trinity doesn't isn't the reason i don't believe in uh christianity the trinity is just another aspect of this this uh, god of theirs which i think is ridiculous because i don't believe the original yahweh exists in the first place the trinity is just a subset of yahweh so for me yahweh is what doesn't exist and i don't care what the f you know i don't give a shit what yahweh decided to change himself into or how he decided to partition himself but if i were to explain the trinity to someone who doesn't know i could do that and it would and it makes sense and it, it's not contradictory to a creature if you already believe a creature of omniscient omnipotent and omniscient capabilities exists an entity that has all of these uh, attributes omniscience omnipotence omnipresence all of those attributes then if you believe such an ex entity exists the trinity isn't a problem it's it's actually quite simple it's very simple in fact uh the the mere mere concept of quantum tunneling uh, sorry quantum entanglement would even in a scientific way explain to you that a trinity could exist a, 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 a scenario like a trinity could exist so the trinity isn't the reason i can't i don't believe in christianity it's because i don't fucking believe in yahweh yahweh is an asshole and and it couldn't possibly exist but these people can't even handle that the, the concept of the trinity that's already too complicated for them um sorry someone's put down hatoon speaker's corner remove remove removals on ricky millwall's channel uh oh i see i see ricky millwall has covered the uh, hatoon being removed by the police from speaker's corner now to be honest with you it could be because it's the last one of the potentially this year so maybe they just asked her to leave for that reason i remember watching the the banks okay uh so anyway but this is this i just want to get i don't want to get too diverted with the hatoon thing uh i just want to carry on with this a little bit more just so you get the the the, the bit that he's talking about simplicity Trinity and there's Mary and there's all this stuff that suddenly comes from nowhere and I got to a point where I thought I'm not going to know everything um, but I trusted that the message of Islam, the oneness, um, was true um, so I phoned up my local uh, mosque, I spoke to the Imam a few times and read, read, read passages in the Quran and then he never read the Quran, by the way. He just said he read passages of the Quran. Probably recommended passages of the Quran. So he hasn't even sat down and gone at least once through the Quran. You would think if you're going to devote your life to a religion and devote your life to a supposed God that you think is true, you would at least read the fucking book once. At least one time fucking go through it. That's it, my there you go. He took his Shahada and he never even read the Quran once. This is the simpletons that come to fucking I mean, I'll be honest, I I can't even fault this man. He is he is a simpleton which has no aspect of of sort of complex thinking about him. He doesn't want to think comp in a complex way. He doesn't want to think about philosophy and, and all these other things. Islam is 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 would fit him like a like a glove you know what i mean it's it's the perfect fucking match uh because islam now my issue isn't that simpletons like this will will convert to islam my issue is that christianity is failing this man christianity should have at least had an f attempt at trying to answer this man's questions 
and he should have at least uh, you know gone down that path to try to have some of his questions answered to so that he can at least go t- if he's even going to pick Islam at least do it with a much better understanding of of why he left Christianity but he doesn't he's just just another one of those fucking modine types um sorry mc do you, i'm i'm just ranting do you do you want to get in on this well <clears throat> i <laughs> I mean, I, I know I haven't we agree been, for most of this shit, but... <laughs> well, we will agree. I haven't brought up with Christianity. Yeah, I mean, I mean with, with Islam for... <laughs> from birth to, to, to the current age, they, they have... You know, I've, I've been brought up in Catholicism. Basically, a very kind of a hypocritical brand of Christianity where you don't stick to the rules, rules very much. It's not like Calvinism or Protestantism... Uh, or even Anglicanism. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's Islam, uh, Islam, basically, first of all, the Quran is is uh, for the first uh, in first pages much of a copy of the Old Testament. From that's what I have seen and I, when I have read it, mm. it's it's not even politi- po- poetically uh, or even put in an order. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really hard to read it if, if you have some. Uh, if you have the upper echelon of intelligence, to, to be honest, it was very hard for me to read this book and not be tired of its uh, uh, simplicity, stupidity, and barbarism in it, for, for, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, and don't, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm exactly the same. I don't think Christianity is, 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 is going to answer your, you know, es- those esoteric and those cosmic sort of questions and yes. those ultimate questions. But for this man to go from nothing I, I don't know whatever whatever he was raised in probably some sort of christian anglican sort of scenario to go to catholicism and then jump from catholicism to islam it's he doesn't he's not like he's a deep thinker about anything he doesn't exactly sit around and think about things too deeply he just wants something that gives him very easy very quick digestible answers because he have a mindset of a slave. N- nobody would choose Islam that, that they don't have a mindset of a slave, to, to be honest. Slave, and, and people that are born, natural born slaves, don't want to um, co- co- uh, be put through complicated thought processes or br- brutality of the truth at times. N- no, it, it is fine with him because some, somebody or something or some kind of a fictional entity can order him around and his life is complete because fi- fi- because it is put in an order. He doesn't care what order, but at least he doesn't have to ans- ask all those difficult, terrible for him questions. I mean, uh, even brutal questions that that frankly I enjoy to ask. And uh, mm. I don't care what the outcome. I want to just know the truth. The truth for me is is basically the reward in itself. Even if it going to hurt me really bad because I know that I- exactly. Even a few months later. I, I will be happy with, with the truth, and I will just get over it. I will, I will get over it as, as usual. Well, exactly, exactly. Let me just let me just play this a little bit more, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to the Ricky Millwall video. Ricky Millwall has posted a video where uh, Hatoon's being escorted out or being taken out of the park. Uh, That's amazing, you know. Uh, what, what was the one fundamental thing that? What was the one fundamental thing that? Probably the. Uh, the faith that the brothers have. Yeah. You know what I mean, a lot, a lot of the brothers have a... The faith. So that means the blind belief in something you can't prove. That was the thing that attracted him to Islam. The fact that people are so gullible that will believe in shit that they don't have any evidence for. That's the clincher for this man to believe in fucking Islam. I mean, to me, that just goes straight to the heart of, 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 the, of the man's psyche. Is that, oh... These guys believe in shit that they don't have any evidence for, and they really believe it. That's awesome. That's the religion for me. <laughs> it's because there's a bunch of fucking idiots who believe in shit that they don't even have any evidence for, but they really believe that shit. Now that's the religion for me. <laughs> Real faith. Um... How friendly they were, how keen they first went to the mosque, how keen they were all to, to help and share, share so the of course faith. They're gonna be, um, of course they're going to be fucking friendly to you, 
They, they, they're, a, they're a fucking, as far as Islam is, they're like a business. They're going to fucking coast you in. Any, any, I could go to a fucking Anglican church. I could go to a Presbyterian church. And they'll all be like, oh, come, come, please. Hell, the fucking Sikhs give you food. I could, I could, I'm extremely attracted to Sikhi, Sikhi because I have a fucking fat stomach, <laughs> and I love, and I love their fucking food anyway. I love all that curry shit, <laughs> even the vegetarian uh, the way, stuff Banksy, I like. Little, by the way, Banksy, because I'm a little bit ignorant about it, do Sikhs uh, also a proletizing fate? I mean, Sikhism is a is Sikhism Pro a proletizing fate? They're not really no. No, you're gonna gonna have to go and find them. They're not gonna come to you. They're not that. Oh, that no, kind of not not like the Abraham aggressive types. No, no, no. They're, they're not even close. Most <laughs> Dharmic religions, Buddhism. I mean, have you ever? I mean, apart, apart from Harry Krishnas, Harry Krishnas are the only ones that I've seen them. You know, run around playing their bells and stuff and giving out leaflets. They're like the closest that I've ever seen. A oh. Buddhist religion or a Dharmic religion proselytizing or trying to advertise their their religion. Buddhist. I've never had one Buddhist in my entire life tell me, "Here's some Buddhist material. Read this shit." They they don't give two shits. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. You have to go no, beg uh... them to. And also, also not only that, with the Buddhists, their their stuff is a lot of jargon. They use a lot of like. Uh, philosophical jargon in their books you have to go figure out how to even translate some of their shit even in english it's hard to understand because they use so much like philosophical jargon uh so buddhism doesn't it's, it's not only not encouraging it doesn't advertise it practically puts you off it's fucking hard <laughs> to learn this shit uh judaism is Oh, uber exclusive you literally have to go study for two years before they even consider accepting you so they're, they're like fuck off they have no interest in re new recruits um baha'is they don't really advertise much i've literally seen one guy at speaker's corner one old man in a chair standing next to the fence and occasionally if you go up to him he might give you a leaflet or something that's the only baha'i that i've ever seen <laughs> Give me any indicator that he wants other people to become Baha'is. Uh, most other <clears throat> religions, Islam and Christianity, are the biggest two for proselytizing. And, and hence why they're the biggest two sort of religions in the world, if you actually look at their numbers. Oh, but I also, uh, I have to tell you now the uh, another truth about proletization. And uh, I mean, not about, about proletization, but you have, uh, you have shown the simpleton... Uh, Decide uh, why people want to be Muslims. They want to convert to that faith, but there's also uh, but the ones that staying there are frankly to me are comfortable cowards. I'm, and I don't mean it also about, only about Islam. I mean also about the Catholics in my own country. Comfortable mm. cowards. Yeah. And uh, why that? Why is that? Because you know uh, they don't know better. And uh, second. When I say cowards, I mean that they are afraid what other people might say, what the neighbor might say, what the family member oh, yeah. might say, think. Yeah, exactly. And also the uh, the Muslims are exactly the same, by the way. The Muslims are exactly the same. In fact, the I wouldn't even, I mean, in, if you're living in a Muslim, if you're living in a in Britain and you're, you're not a Muslim, but you still pretend to be one, then yeah, you're a comfortable coward. Because you don't have to. You can say that you're not a Muslim, although the Muslim community will shun you. But you're in Britain, you may, you know, you can probably live without having to be a Muslim and you'll be fine. But in Iran and in Pakistan and Arab Emirates and Dubai, if you're a Muslim, if you don't want to be a Muslim, you don't even have a choice. You could get killed. If you're public, if you come out publicly and say you, you no longer believe in god or you're no longer a muslim you could get executed you could you could be not even i'm not even saying even if the country doesn't have a a death penalty for apostasy the people in the country will kill you will will fucking string you up uh, without the government killing you so even if the government doesn't kill you which some of them do 11 countries in the world have a death penalty for apostasy but even if the government doesn't kill you the people, the people in your neighborhood, your own neighbors will fucking burn your house down. So, of course, these people can't come out and say that they're uh, they're not, you know, Muslim. So in Muslim countries, forget it. The, the poor bastards could get 
killed in non-muslim countries uh europe and america and stuff people are too worried about well, yeah what their neighbors are going to say uh, although you're right the christians are exactly the same imagine if you're a christian if you if you decide not to be a christian in like southern i don't know red state in, in alabama or somewhere in america uh if you're in a heavily christian community you're gonna have problems you're gonna have you know people people won't kill you yeah. that's the main difference so they won't kill you but they will shun you from the community so well but they can still leave alabama and, and go for another state well so they is, still have the yeah i mean it's easier said than done though dude i mean let's face it imagine imagine right now imagine right now someone says to you okay next week you're gonna have to leave your flat you're gonna have to move to another part of poland how much shit do you have to go through to just make that move happen and you're a single guy you don't even have children actually i don't know you may have children but i don't think you have a child you have any children no i don't or any major commitments imagine how much shit you have to go through to pack all your crap all your stuff and find another place in another town pay the deposit pay the month's advance rent all of that shit well, and then move just just as a single person imagine you have to do that now imagine you have children you have a wife you have a house uh, also uh, you have, you forgot about one thing that i know about bureaucracy that, that that's another hindrance in this exactly. country to be honest exactly so <laughs> It's not as easy as people think. People say, oh, just move. Oh, just do this, just do that. It's not always that simple. People sometimes can't move. They don't have the funds. They don't have the, the circumstances. They just don't have the, 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 the support. And this is why uh, organizations like ex-Muslims of Britain, uh, ex-Muslims of America, uh, and other sort of ex-Muslim organizations have become so incredibly vital to Muslims who live in Muslim countries or Muslims who are being persecuted in Muslim communities in, in Europe because these organizations are now putting resources at the disposal of those families and those people who no longer wish to be Muslim to so that they can get out. Now, I'm hoping that there will be, I would imagine maybe there are, I don't know any particularly, that are atheist or non-christian organizations that would also help christians but the christians are not persecuting non-christians that live amongst them as much it's nowhere near as bad as islam people have been beaten up in the streets people have been killed in britain a family was beaten and 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 forced to leave their house because they were being literally physically attacked uh, a Pakistani family because they stopped being Muslim they apostated uh, so Islam at the moment is far more cruel far more aggressive than Christian communities and no, don't get me wrong again there are Christian communities that are fucking awful and like you said in your case they're like you know, a lot of people are comfortable cowards uh, but uh, you know these, these this is why people keep bitching about oh why do these atheists keep complaining about uh religion why do these atheists have organizations yes because you fucking religious people persecute anyone who decides not to be part of your gang anymore part of your fucking club anymore as soon as they, they say we're not part of your your club anymore you fucking beat them up you persecute them you spit at them you spit at their children in their in schools you throw th bricks through their windows these things happen. These are real events that happen to uh, people who decided to leave a particular religion. So yes, organizations have to come together. Non-Muslims and non-Christians have to come together and make an organization to support those people who you fucks persecute once they decide to not be part of your club anymore. And this is this is the, the reality of, the, of a life that a lot of people live. Anyway... I'm going to skip this guy. I'm going to go to Hatun being escorted. Again, another symbol of Islam at its fucking finest, by the way. I just want to point that out as well. Uh, Islam at its finest, doing what it does best. Persecute, uh, bully, and, uh, and, and, and effectively rush people out. I hope you can see this, actually. I, see I, I can hear uh, I mean, I'm watching it now. Fucking racist, this people, man! 
German, you, you are racist, man. This people are racist. Wallahi, racist. German, man. We just need peace. Yes, Muslims, Muslims at their finest. This is I, I I'm glad that this is happening so that the world can see how how Islam is and how it will be as it gets as it grows even more in Britain. This is this is the sort of shit that people should see. This is the canary down the fucking minefield. I've been saying it for fucking 20 years. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody listens. For 20 years I've been saying this is the shit that Islam produces. And nobody, oh no, religion of peace, oh no, no, nowadays we can't even fucking really express our, our views on, on Islam in, 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 in even these social media platforms anymore. Because they're all cocking to, to this bullshit as well. But this is the real Islam, this is the Islam that I fucking grew up with. Now imagine this, but 10,000 people, 50,000 people in the streets, this same chant i swear to god when i hear this fucking the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end because this is like ptsd shit for me because this is the the world that i saw in in iran and how it all fucking flipped upside down One one other thing I know uh, I want everyone to note as well is Muslims. This this you can see the fading light. So this is late in the day, probably around five six o'clock uh, onwards, because the Muslims become real brave. When it starts to get dark, it becomes late in the day and the police usually leave. So the police are usually there in the morning until about 1, 2 o'clock, I would say. There's a van, there's usually a police van, there's police officers around. So most of the day, the police are there. The Muslims don't do any of this shit. They don't pull any of this shit. The same last week, when they grabbed her book and then they started to hound her and the fists were flying, it was because the police had left. These cowardly little fucks don't do shit when the police is around. They only do it in later in the day when the police start to leave and there's only like one or two straggling police officers around, sometimes none at all. And the problem is, Speaker's Corner, people don't seem to realize these police officers, uh, I don't know what's, what's with the police situation because they seem to think that you know after like 3 o'clock everybody goes home. People are there till seven, eight o'clock at night. You can't just fucking fuck off at two, three in the afternoon, and and expect this this shit not to get any more heated. Things get r properly dangerous actually at around this time onwards. <laughs> By the way, this guy saying kelp called deer and all that shit. He's calling her a dog, uh, or someone a dog anyway. She, he's swearing. He's swearing in Arabic. This is a dog, filthy dog, and all that shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Go, go, go. To be honest with you, this is this is uh, this Raj has done this. This is the uh, the um, Tan has had this thing, but both Raj and Hatun situation have both been because of Muslims. Tan situation was because of the N word and and the and the G block and the black sort of community to to some extent. Although the Muslims were among amongst that as well, but both. Uh, oh yes, Tan have uh, made a whole manifesto. Yeah. By the way, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Tan Tan got this treatment twice uh, because of um, what's it called? Because of his, you know, his his sort of harsh critiques of black people as well as Muslims and all the rest. Because, but he had he covered like he basically pissed everyone off. Uh, but uh, Hatun and Raj were most muslims it was actually no it was 100 percent muslims for raj and 100 percent muslims obviously for hatun uh although hatun as i say she's a, she's an incredibly polite individual believe it or not she never swears this is like she's because she's all christian and all that she never swears uh she never really says bad impolite words but she does hammer the muslims all the time and the thing is this is the last week anyway before Next week is all going to be shut down, or, or I don't know what's going to be. I doubt there'll be much of a speaker's corner next week. Uh, but whatever it, it's going to happen next week, uh, none of these idiots are going to be there. This is the last large crowd like this. Uh, I hope, actually, the Muslims show up. I hope all the Muslims show up. I, I, I hope Hatun shows up on her own and just stands on her own and just does it. And I want to see these Muslims try to gather around her, and then they all get arrested and get put in jail <laughs> because... <laughs> because they came to a person who was standing on their own, simply giving a, a speech. So I don't know. I don't know. I hope. I mean, I think that's the weird thing. They can't. They they can say you can only gather in groups of six. So technically, you can go there on your own and just stand in front of the air and, and just yourself with a camera and just simply make your speech. You don't have to go there and say I'm part of any group. You just I'm on my own. I'm just standing here and I'm saying what I want to say to to my camera effectively uh you don't even have to have a group but i don't know i don't think it's going to work out though i think most people are not going to bother going but we'll see okay but, uh, but i have uh, a question for you isn't the police by uh, uh, by the way softer on muslims when they are committing crimes or, or breaking any laws by the way oh they from are. My experience, oh. They are. oh yeah 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 the, the muslim the, the the i say literally hatoon's book was stolen and we still, I'm still not 100% sure anyone um, saw uh, or anyone's been arrested or anyone's, uh, uh, it's, uh, anyone's been uh, sort of charged. I mean, she got mugged. Effectively, she got mugged at Speaker's Corner, but because it was the Quran, even though it was her property and some Muslim took it at Speaker's Corner, nothing, nothing's being done. Nothing. Even though we've got full video evidence of exactly what this individual's done, uh, you know, with him, with the book in his hand, later on with the book in his uh, in his jacket, you know, it's all there. If if it was if it was her iPhone, if it was her handbag, would that be any different? But because it's a Muslim and it's a Quran, the police don't look, look like they're gonna do shit. This is what I'm saying about people getting pissed off with the police and their two tier, oh, uh... their two tier <clears throat> policing. Uh, they, you know, and it's one rule for one and one rule for another. Oh, I know, and I have bad Steve. Sorry. And I have bad news for you uh, also because I, too bad I cannot post the link anymore of it. But a few years ago, when Prince Charles had visited Poland, mm. he have um, also vis in in Poland he have visited a small wooden mosque, an ins insignificant, irrelevant building for for our country. I mean, in a country full of churches. 
even even that have even more synagogues that are standing to this day. Why he would visit a small wooden mosque? I will tell you why. Because of the position of Islam in Great Britain. And this is horrifying to me, looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, this is... If he is visiting, yeah. if he is visiting that, this political gesture means we are Muslims, we are the hot shit here, we rule, <laughs> and, yeah. and, you, and, you, and you better keep a low profile because we're going to fuck you up sooner or later. Yeah. I just want to say hello to Mr. Steve uh, from yeah. Atheist Steve. How are you, sir? Hi, Steve. Steve? Good evening. Oh, I'm okay. Oh. Hi there, both. What Hi. a day. What a day at Speaker's Corner. So, uh, can you uh, give us a bit more of so, a... Uh, sort of... Sorry. I can't... Yeah. Hear. Yeah, definitely. So, I've been there all... I've been there all day. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Can you hear you loud and clear? Can you hear me? Can you hear, can you hear me? Cool, cool, cool. So I've been there all day, and it was quite... It, yeah, yeah, I can. And it was a good day. It was peaceful. It was calm. There was lots of good discussions. No trouble at all. Um, until... Until I would say about three or four o'clock. And the first bit of trouble was... And this is a new tactic I've seen. So Hatton was just doing her thing. It was all very calm. Um, but all of a sudden, there was about six or so Muslim kids, and no word of a lie, from the age of about eight to about 13, I would say. And they were basically trying to wind Hatun up, and they were shouting in her face and pointing their fingers in her face and putting their hands over their cameras and being really disgustingly badly behaved. No sign of any parents or anyone um, you know, trying to make them behave. And that went on literally for a couple of hours. Um, and that was pretty disgusting. So eventually they, they disappeared off and it, and it got back to normal again. And then as it was getting dark, so this wasn't until about seven o'clock, and suddenly the numbers of Muslims just, there were hordes of them. Yeah. Um, and, and the numbers have been quite low. It was a good day, but it wasn't that busy. But as I say, it started to get dark. Soon as about seven o'clock, the numbers just rocketed. And I can do Brown Hattoon. Um, I wasn't right in the middle as it started, but I was just standing a bit off, and I could hear that it was getting very, very noisy. Um, and luckily, the police were still there um, oh, because often the police disappear off at five or six o'clock, and we don't see anything of them, which is ridiculous because it's always it's always six seven. It's the main hour when yeah. trouble starts. Um, so luckily there were three police officers and eventually after it started getting really noisy, they went over to investigate and they went right into the middle of the crowd and quite frankly, they could not control it. So they practically immediately came out of the crowd and they looked worried and they were all on their radios. Um, and then, you know, within five minutes, we had four police vans full of, of police arrive and they, they struggled to do it. Now, apparently, is it Paperboy? I, am, I believe Paperboy was it. Mm. Um, I think it was basically the, the, the other Christian guys that were kind of protecting and standing with Hatoon who received the violence. But basically, it kicked off. And even when all those police numbers, bottles started being thrown into the crowd oh, um, wow. from a distance. And it was nasty. It was really vile and disgusting. And the police struggled. Even with those four police fans of, of police, the police still struggled to deal with the crowd it was getting really nasty um and basically as you can see on the video they they had to take Atun out of that situation for her own safety so as you said as they did with Tan, as they did with raj they you know they just take the person that's being attacked by the mob and they put him in a police vehicle or in a bus in Tan's case she put her into an unmarked red police car and drove her off for her own safety but at this point, you know, you can hear it in the video. There's Takfir, Takfir, Alu Akbar, screaming and shouting. And then they were all screaming, victory, 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 that they thought they'd won. And, and you heard racism being shouted. And it was pretty disgusting. And basically, once Hatoon had been taken off in the police car, I think even more police arrived. And they completely swept the corner clear. So basically, everyone was pushed out of the park and they just closed the park down. They closed it down. So that's basically what happened. And in terms of what's going to happen, well, they, they, they pushed us all out of the park and wouldn't let anyone return. So it was oh, closed wow. for the evening. 
Wow. But we've been we've been asking we've been asking the police all day what is going to happen next week because of obviously this new government change in um six people and and they didn't seem certain you know different police officers were saying different things some were saying it's going to continue other police officers were saying oh they think it's going to close down but they told us earlier on that they were going to be handing out leaflets later to say what the rules what the plan was going to be for speakers corner next week that never happened so we still haven't been given a definitive line what's going to happen with speakers corner but i tell you what that mob violence would have sealed their fate that will give them the excuse for completely closing it down now yeah. during the period of covid because that you know that's the second week in a row that has been absolute mob violence i mean it was a lot worse to, um, today than it was last sunday but it's steadily been getting worse so i think i've got no doubts at at all i absolutely expect this to say no speakers call it, um you know postpone suspend during covid but i think today would have sealed that yeah this is they my can't, yeah. they can't have mobs of people after dark even how they behave today it, it was it was pretty disgusting I and mean, we've seen we've seen bad behavior at the corner before but tonight was pretty pretty disgusting behavior yeah, this was my my biggest. And, and people, uh, worry. I have read and heard people. I have read and heard people say things about Patoon burned the Quran or was was attempting to burn a Quran. I've not seen any evidence for that. I think that's hearsay. I think that's rumor. I think that's nonsense. Well, I, I mean, she's she's just burnt. Uh, I mean, she's put holes in the Quran, and she's uh, no. Actually, that's it. That's pretty much. Yeah, well, she's she done. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you know. The thing is, yeah, what's yeah. the difference if she's put holes in the Quran or if she burns the Quran? Like, what, what, really, what does that actually do? <laughs> what's the difference? Uh, this is it's the problem. The They've got like different I levels. Always, I... Sorry, Steve. Go yeah, on. yeah. They're, they're, as I always say in these situations, if you're, if you're so thin-skinned, if you're so vulnerable to being offended, why, why, why come to Speaker's Corner? Where you're gonna probably hear stuff that you don't like. If you can't hack it, go somewhere else. Go to the other end of Oxford Street. Go to Bottom Court Road. Why would anyone choose to go to speak the corner? And particularly if they're so offended by Hatoon, would it not be the better, stronger man that just walked away and ignored it? Well, the, the, she's the so thing offense, is, offensive. The, yeah, this is the don't problem. Give her oxygen. The, the thing is, they come to Speaker's Corner. And, Number one, because they want this this thing. Also, they they want to demonstrate that they are they are powerful and they they control or they have a stake in stake speaker's corner. So this is a power play more than it is a like oh I'm I'm I, you know I get offended if so, I go to speaker's corner I I won't go. These guys yeah, they've, they've so, heard I'm ten so, times worse shit than than what Hatoon has said. <laughs> So, so the yeah, so the trouble that happened last week. So um, we know Hatton's book Quran was stolen. She was exposed. A guy exposed himself to her, and then another guy punched John, who's the ginger-haired guy that wears glasses. That's right. Um, yeah. that, that, that's off the The guy that punched John was standing there today. He was there today. Brass, un, untouched. Yes. I was, I was closely looking out to see whether the other two, so the guy that exposed himself um, and then the guy that, that stole the book, because, you know, they're all, they're all shown on videos. We know what they look like. Those two didn't return, but the guy that punched John was there today. And he was even confronted about it, and he just laughed it off. The complete joke. Yeah, I know, because, I, I, because the, the thing is, they get away with it. The problem is, if there is no punitive exactly. measure for bad behaviour... If you don't get punished for bad behaviour, then you just carry on, don't you? Why? Why? why would I you... have, yeah, on previous occasions, I have literally been told by the police, word for word, you cannot poke the hornet's nest. If someone is poking the hornet's nest, we have to take them out. And I said, no, you need to deal with the hornets. If someone might be standing there with a stick poking the hornet's nest. You have to deal with the hornets. You have to deal with the violent thugs. The thing is, this is the problem with police um, sort of uh, crowd control. Is am I going to, as a police officer, and I, I get that, I get their their policies and their their sort of tactics. Is do I, as a police officer, I'm here with like let's say four or five of my officers. 
what is easier for me to try to put 20 fucking crazy Muslims screaming Allahu Akbar under some sort of control or, or try to somehow arrest them. Because if I put my hand, if they put their hand on a Muslim and try to arrest any one of those Muslims, they're going to have a fucking riot on their hands. Or... But well, exactly. They, 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 they take the short-term path of least resistance. But yeah. without thinking, long-term... This is going to do more harm than good. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's the problem with with police. That's what they'll do. They will always take the the, the shortest path of resistance, and they will uh, they will get rid of the smallest group, which in this case is always the the ones that the this is always the ones that the Muslims are against because the Muslims come in their hordes in speakers corner. I told you, I'm telling you, Steve, the Muslims who come in their hordes in speakers corner is to demonstrate they run that place that oh, is completely. a power they turned, as i said they, they turned up on mass and they turned up on mass just as it was getting dark you know so they they weren't there to enjoy the, the the debate during the day they turned up there after dark to cause trouble it was blatantly blatantly obvious yeah. But it's already been, you know, what happens? These things are spun online, aren't they? The propaganda is spun. And already it's, you know, Hatun was trying to burn the Quran and they were, you know, defending their faith, etc., etc. And Hatun was put in the back of a police car and arrested and carted. You know, the hate preacher was taken out. Absolute nonsense. Mm. It was a pack of wild animals who arrived after dark to cause violent trouble. Yeah. But the thing is, what most people most non-muslims see they can sell that shit to their muslim communities or their muslim yeah. audience that's fine they'll sell that shit to their muslim audience but what the non-muslim world and the non-muslim uh, you know uh, country will see is a bunch of muslims screaming allahu akbar in the middle of london yeah. now that's what's going to that's the message that is going to be spread around the non-muslim world the Muslims are going to preach, you know, they're going to, they're going to, uh, they're preaching to the choir anyway. So the faithful are always going to believe the Muslims who say, oh, she's an Islamophobe racist. I heard racist being shouted in that, yeah. in that video. <laughs> uh, so you're going to, you're going to, you know, they're, they're, their own Muslim groupies are going to believe that shit anyway. That's nothing, we can, can't do anything about that. But for the rest of the non-Muslim world, they're going to see this is London 2020. This is the shit that the Muslims pull. And by the way, the the Christians coming in their force, and by the way, the Christians do come in their force regularly, but not as as in their in their numbers the way the, the Muslims obviously do. And the Muslims uh, are much more coordinated, if you like, in their in their tactics than than Christians. I think the Christians are only just in the last couple of years are mobilizing and and are actually kind of coming together. Like I see Bob come and defend and Soko and all that guys come and defend Hatun if Hatun is under pressure and, and if, if Bob is under any kind of scrutiny or pressure then other Christians will come and, and try to sort of you know give him support. But, but what, we, what, what we need to listen to as Britain is, is what you said five minutes ago um, Banksy and I, and I thought to me it was really powerful it said you know when you listened and watched that video that you did five minutes ago it was almost like it gave you PTSD yeah. what you've experienced yeah. in, in your home country yeah. Now you know if that if that sort of message from you well, saying that doesn't wake some of us up in this country, I don't know what will. Exactly. Sorry, MC. What well, you? maybe my message is going to be too simple here, but uh, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, the British authorities didn't learn nothing from history. Uh, what I mean is they are appeasing the bully once again, the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Once upon a time, it was with Hitler uh, and Nazi Germany. Before they had the, you, you guys had Churchill, you had Chamberlain and many f years of Chamberlain. Now you have the Muslims in your own country, and you are try. I mean, not you, but the your authorities try to appease them, appease them, make accommodation, whatever, for the sake of the nonsense that is called community cohesion. And uh, I want to be. It's, it's not to be cheeky or. Uh, or to be in, in, <clears throat> rude about it, but maybe that's the reason why the British Empire is not is no more because nobody has taken action when, when it should be taken, mm. and Britain may pay an, another high price for that in the future. I, exactly, yeah, 
I think I think you're right. I think when yeah. you look at the demographics now, I know that the unfortunately this is this is the battle we're fighting from both sides. I know the Colettes and the and the Ralphs will always talk about demographics, uh, but that's because they don't want Britain, you know, to become a non-white country or non non-white English country. But I'm talking about demographics because I don't want Britain to become an Islamic state. <laughs> So yes. my my battle for demographics is because I don't want Britain to become an Islamic fucking republic. Uh, they're talking about they don't want Britain to become a non-white country. I, I'll be honest, uh, I'm mo mostly concerned about the Islamic side. I can live with a with a secular not you know Britain that isn't necessarily hundred uh, percent white English. Although again, I still hold that it would be better. For most of us, if Britain has a predominantly native, homogenous society, it is better for most of us. Unfortunately, I don't see the numbers going in that favor, and it's going to take a, a tremendous yeah, yeah. change. Sorry, you were and saying. It's ironic, to be honest. And it's, and it's ironic. You, you have left Iran because you wanted to live a non Muslim life. Now, you have to be concerned of Britain not, not becoming a same kind of a place like Iran. And I also have to be concerned, even if we're going to probably are going to be dead uh, by, by that. But <laughs> I don't want Britain to be an Islamic country with, with a nuclear capability, to, to be honest. This is a thing that uh, I'm scared the most because the British nuclear weapons, uh, I mean, ha have a good delivery system and it can reach Warsaw, Poznan, uh, Krakow, whatever. Well, that, that's the other thing as well. We have a nuclear proliferation act uh, or, or treaties and stuff around the world. But if Britain becomes a Islamic republic, they will have the nukes that Britain has available to it. So, yeah. uh, so the Muslims may not gain nuclear p weapons in the Middle East because of the non-proliferation and all that, but they will conquer a country that already has one <laughs> that yes, already has if, the facilities and if the trends and the attitude especially of, of the labor folk in, in, i mean the party in, in your country will keep up with it i'm sure that many ideas will say but it would be racist to not to give to the muslims the nuclear codes and the keys to the to that <laughs> well, no, no, it's, not, it's not that it will be racist not to give the muslims when your prime but minister be becomes argument. a muslim when your leader of the nation is a muslim is a, is is then is sadiq khan not even sadiq khan sadiq khan is a is a pussy of a muslim as far as i'm concerned he's all about gay rights and shit he's one of the one of the, one of the weak ones that they'll throw in at the beginning but eventually You'll have your Ali Dawas and your Mohammed Hijabs who will sit at a parliament. And those are the fucks who, once once your prime minister is an Ali Dawa type or a Mohammed Hijab type or, God forbid, a, a dick pick type, Tahweed type, yeah, or an Anjum Chowdhury type, once your prime minister is uh, elected as the prime minister, he gets the codes. You don't give him, any, you don't give Muslims anything. They simply take it. This isn't about giving people anything. This is about them taking it. The true power comes in being able to take and enact your will when you wish it to. That's when power matters. That's when you actually know you have power. Muslims are not going to sit around and wait for, 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 for us to give them anything. Right now, they'll just simply play this limp-wristed liberal politics bullshit and cry victimhood every time you fucking try to address their horrific religion. But once they get power, they will simply take all the things uh, uh, facets of society as and when they want it and there will be no giving them anything they will take it from you whether you like it or not that's what they've always done their pattern of their history for 1400 years has been that nobody seems to give a shit nobody seems to look at the pattern of of behavior of this religion and its followers for 1400 years they're not even they're not even trying to do something different at this stage. Right now, they are doing exactly what they did to Egypt, what they did to Tunisia, what they did to Persia, what they did to uh, Babylon and Byzantine. They are doing exactly the same shit. 
They do the exact same shit. They first go in as merchants, as as settlers. Yeah. And they expand and they grow and they populate and then eventually their caliphate armies will come in and fucking knock the final stone down. That's it. They haven't done anything different. Look at, go and talk to a fucking Coptic Egyptian and find out how their country was taken from them. Go and talk to a Tunisian and find out how their civilization was taken from them. And I'll tell you as a Persian, I'll, I'll fucking smell it. I'll give you a coloring book. Of how they fucking took it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's paint by fucking numbers, these people. They don't behave any... They don't literally... They have no sophistication about them. Their entire methodology is paint by fucking numbers. And they've been doing it for 1,400 years. And they, they finally got pushback from the Crusaders when they came to Europe. And that fucking halted them. And now they're just doing it... Uh, almost exactly the same way, except they're doing it through immigration. And eventually, when their numbers are at a point where they can enforce their will, they will enforce their will. They will put you under their boot heel. They will put you under that sword, and they'll tell you, either see the light of Allah in the reflection of my sword, or you will get my sword. That day will come. I will promise you this. If you don't fucking shape up and start fucking pushing back against Islam, the day will come when your sons and your daughters will be under that fucking sword. It has happened for 1400 years and these people are not about to change anything anytime, anytime soon. They are not changing their tactics anytime soon. They have no desire. They believe that they have the solution for mankind. They believe that they have the fucking top best possible message that humanity should live under they believe this shit and when people believe that kind of thing believe me they're not gonna they're not gonna change their path they're not gonna change their mind halfway down the road and go oh yeah fuck all this islam shit we're now secular uh, uh europeans they're not they're not secular Europeans. They will never be secular Europeans. They will use secular European society and its laws and its freedoms to fuck you over. <laughs> well, speaking of secular Europeans, uh, to, to be honest, unfortunately, we, we have a lot of traitors there. I mean, especially those Marxists that allow them to do it and allow them to take over. Yeah, exactly. No this is what Christopher Hitchens said. Hitchens said the the barbarians never take a city until someone opens the gates for them, and it will be our own liberal lefties and clergymen who will open the gates, and they're doing it right now. Oh yes, oh yes, and I have to say that for now, even the Catholic Church is run by a Marxist pope. Let's face it. Yeah, the Catholic Church. This guy is the Obama the of the Catholic them. Church. This is how fucked up it is. At least during the, the caliphates, the crusaders had the church saying to them, no, you have to now push back against these, these moors. You have to push back against these types. We, and they, they assembled the crusades and the, and the crusaders to at least start pushing back. Now, in this era, you won't even fucking have the church come and fucking protect. The church will fucking take their side. You won't even yep. fucking have the church to assemble your crusaders for you to try to push back. You will lose yep. Spain and you will lose Germany for another 400 to 800 years. You know that they ran Spain for 800 years. Was it 400 I or know. 800 years? I'm not 100% sure. But it was something in that region. It was at least either 400 to 800 years the fucking Muslims had Spain. This time, oh, I don't even think you're going to get it back, and you'll lose Germany and Sweden and Switzerland to boot. I have also heard of this Pope uh, talking about accepting Muslims in our I'm family. Yeah, yeah. Now. I'm going to wish you good night. Oh, thank good you. Night. Thank you for coming, Steve. Thank you for the, for the rundown. You. Have a good one. This uh, <laughs> pr present Pope... Uh, yeah, right, no problem. Quick update. Thankfully... The Polish population doesn't hear, listen to him too, too much. And by the way, he doesn't have much authority. Or, in other words, he's not like John Paul II. He, he doesn't have the charisma to us, thankfully, because he also said that uh, Muslims should be even welcomed to, into European families. In other words, allow our women to, to have them as husbands, as boyfriends, whatever. <laughs> 
to be honest with you, Banksy. Yeah. I wouldn't want to uh, ever to talk to any woman from my family that would bring a Muslim to my house. I don't care. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I, it is extreme, I know, but, but uh, I also remember that would I be accepted as a non-Muslim in a Muslim family? That, that's my question. Not in a fucking million years. <laughs> yes. And that's the reason why I, I, I would rather destroy my own family than, than, than allow that, those kind of relations there. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, but I mean, it's it's hard, man. It's you can't you know, trying to go against uh, your own. Yeah, trying to go against your own blood. It's 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 it's. I mean, like you said, like you said, you know, the comfortable coward. Um, yes, I know, but uh, but Banksy, I was threatened in London uh, b because uh, by those guys, yes, because uh, they thought it was me. That, that that I was hitting on one one of the women from their family by their entire family, of course. Uh, but I was lucky. Thankfully, one guy have came uh, came in and said that that's not the guy. Leave him alone. I oh, was wow. extremely lucky. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, this is what I mean. This is increasing. And the thing is, at the moment, at the moment, it's it's like pockets of England. So you got like your your pockets of Manchester. You've got London. You've got Birmingham. You have got like Savile. Savile Row, I think it's called, or Savile Town. Uh, it's a Savile Town, uh, and and you know, a few pockets here and there, and and Luton, some parts of Luton. It's all in pockets where the Muslim community has congress, you know, uh, join, uh, sort of come together. But eventually, it's going to push out. They're going to start pushing out, so it won't be Lon just London anymore. It'll become Kent and 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 North London, and then into into further out. And again, it's just going to keep expanding. It's not a it's not something that's just going to happen in one spot, and they're going to just stay there. They are increasing their numbers not only by birth, but on also by literally fucking coming in on boats. Uh, so, so these, these people who are coming from the Middle East and from North African nations, um, 90% of them are Muslim. They're, they're, I would, I would wager, you know, at least 90 to 95% are, are Muslim. They're not, they're not converted Christians and, and, and Buddhists and Hindus and Sikhs and, 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 and atheists that are coming over. They're mostly going to be Muslim. Uh, so not only we're getting numbers of birth rates, which is, exceedingly it, it quadruples uh, i think it's doubles uh, the, the 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 average birth rate of a of a, a sort of native english family uh, so not only through birth but through actual physical migration uh, this this shit is uh, it's not it's there's i mean i i don't know i don't know i fear uh, that uh, i mean i know someone like ned is probably going to going to you know, oh no, it'll never happen. The first uh, uh, state of delusion uh, one zero or two zero. The what? I mean, st uh, state of delusion. Oh yeah. One on one. That's what I want to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it will never happen. Bullshit. Yeah. It it is it, it is a it is a slow process, but I also can confirm it will sooner or later happen. If the Brits will not change their attitude. And if you, if uh, the guys, they will not start to be more, uh, as they would call it, rude. I want to see Brits rude now, and f because that that's what is happening, especially when I'm thinking, I'm thinking now of London being uh, swallowed by Islam almost. Am I right? Or yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just reading a, a message was written by Sam M. He says he once was threatened in London. Uh, because he didn't say salamu alaikum to some guy who greeted him, you know, with salamu alaikum. Oh, even better than that. Even better than me. I mean, better, of course, in a sarcastic yeah. way. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, even worse. Th at least they accused you of hitting on their sister. This poor guy just didn't say salam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he just didn't say hello, basically. Is is what he's saying. Now the thing is, if a Muslim ever says to me salam, I always just reply with hello. I don't I don't reply in in Arabic. I'm not a uh, well. Uh, see, to be, they're like, to be you, with you, yeah. To be honest with you, I have my uh, <clears throat> my uh, my foreign uh, <clears throat> uh, nationality to uh, to twist their salam to the word 
Sam. And uh, in Polish, sram uh, means I shit. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember you said something like that. Yeah, <laughs> salam. Yes, I, I, I was basically just uh, pol polite. Uh, pol uh, I mean, uh, pretending that, that, that I, I cannot say it properly because of my accent or anything else. So gotcha. I was just screwing with them after, after this incident with their with, um, with accusations of, uh, of me hitting on their sister. And when I have understood that I could even die for that, for a gossip. Oh, yeah, no. then, then, uh, then my trolling began. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's just, uh, it's so frustrating because there's, like, when you see people who are defending this shit afterwards and you're like, dude, dude, what, what, what the fuck? Even if you're not, you know, even if you don't believe that the, the, the chances of this Britain ever becoming any kind of Islamic majority country and an Islamic state, at least, uh, at least acknowledge the fact that the religion itself is fucked up and we should at least push back against the promotion of this religion. At the very minimum, we could at least push back against people lying and promoting this religion as something useful or good because we can then highlight and at least support those people who highlight uh, the, the, the incredibly... Uh, dangerous and and horrific parts of the religion: marrying nine-year-old kids, uh, killing apostates, uh, slavery, all of the other nasty forced shit. Marriages. Beating up your wife. Sorry. Forced cousin marriages. Yeah, fucking marrying your cousin. At the come on, could you, could we at least agree on that shit? That at least certain level of incest should be considered fucking wrong and and i like the fact that i like the fact that the muslims the muslims talk to secular liberal people and say you know your liberal ideology will not would not stop someone from having incest because if you're not technically harming anyone and if you're using a condom and you're not going to get pregnant then having incest is perfectly fine you fuckers marry your first cousins you marry your first cousins not only you marry your first cousins you have monstrous fucking deformed children because of it too. Half your fucking population has got some kind of fucking spine or mental fucking problem. My my friend, she worked in Harley Street. Now, I haven't spoken to her for a few years, so I don't know if she still does. But she used to work as a secretary, as an office secretary, you know, like front desk secretary uh, in a Harley Street hospital, um, a, a doctor's office. And Harley Street is private doctors, very expensive private doctors. And um, uh, these Arabs from Saudi Arabia, Dubai, these rich Arabs would come every summer. You would see them come to England. They come mostly. They come in the summer because the summertime in in Saudi Arabia is fucking hell on earth. It's like fifty Celsius. It's insane. It's so hot. Uh, you, you you burn alive out there. So most of the rich Arabs come to England and they come to West Europe because it's cooler and it's just generally better weather. Uh, uh, but they go to Harley Street, and my friend was like, these Arabs. They come in with their fucking two or three fucking fucked up children like fucked up children twisted spines and heads are all fucking misshapen and because they're all fucking inbred they're all fucking inbred and they bring them to these holly street doctors to try to fucking fix these kids up most of them are fucking either got autism or or some kind of other it's a lot of lot of fucking spinal issues as well a lot of them seem to have problems with oh. their spine uh, that's that's because you're all fucking marrying your your first cousins, you assholes. Stop marrying your fucking first cousins, and maybe your children will have a slight genetic diversity. <laughs> but of course, they don't believe yeah. in Darwin. So since they don't believe in Darwin, Darwinian evolution doesn't apply to the Arabs. They can just fuck their first cousins, and Allah will bless them with a child. <laughs> Yes, with a, with a child looking like coming from Pripyat or Chernobyl. Yes, exactly, exactly. The fucking kid looks like it just it just came from fucking Chernobyl. I, it's fucked up. I don't want to. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it. But it is. It's fucking awful. Arabs, fucking Muslims, stop marrying your first fucking cousins. At the very minimum, do that shit because <laughs> you fucking idiots.
are producing monsters these days. What the fuck is wrong with them? But this is what I mean. This is what I mean. They fucking. I mean, I keep asking this question of Muslims, and and they they don't really answer it because they know the answer is right. Is it haram or halal to marry your nine-year-old cousin? Under Islamic law, under Sharia, it is absolutely halal to marry your fucking nine-year-old first cousin. This is the insanity of this religion. And we have to fucking pretend that we have to respect this shit. You can marry your first cousin at nine years old under Sharia law. (laughs) That alone should disqualify this fucking religion from any fucking place anywhere in the world. Just that statement should disqualify Muslims from ever being allowed to practice that fucking religion. But no, but no, these fuckers... And that alone also should be a great excuse why I despise a woman, I mean, born and bred in the West, that take this religion or... uh, I, I, I want to embrace this culture be, be, because they want a, a brown rod. I mean, uh, I mean, Polish woman, but basically, but because I know the, the inside of the culture, you know, that they are raised on Latin American soap operas and the guys look like mm-hmm. those Alvaro's, uh, Franco's, or um, Juan's, <laughs> as I call them. I know, I know, it's fucking so, unbelievable. Uh, I don't know, man. Yes. And, and 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 that and that's why I don't I don't even care, frankly. And and, and sometimes I'm happy that I'm living in, in a country where nobody can do anything to, to me for for having those views and and saying them out loud. But, but I know that in Britain I would be in big trouble if, if I would say that. I, I basically would like to cut off my family member for bringing bringing a Muslim into to, to the family. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean the thing is, look, I mean, sure, that's that's like extreme. But the the, the thing is. In all honesty, I can I can appreciate. I know what you're saying. I know what you know. I can I can understand the sentiments of something like that. But generally, uh, for me, is the root the root problem? If I'm if I just simply you know complain about this Muslim or that Muslim or this person or that person, that's just symptoms. You're just dealing with symptoms. You're not dealing with root cause. I know uh, root cause. And that's, uh, I also understand that. Your situation, you, your family is also partly Muslim because you come from a Muslim background. Exactly. Even if you're yeah. But I don't come from any Muslim background. In other words, it's Islam free. So I have a different situation. So I'm using it just because of that. But if I'll be in your situation, I'll probably uh, also be different too. It, it's, it's not that I have something against Iranians, Arabs, or Pakistanis, but, but their faith scared the shit out of me because I would almost lose my life a few times in London because of that. Yeah, and yeah. When, and when and when some selfish, uh, arrogant, up her ass bitch, especially from my own country, is telling me that I don't know shit about it, even though I've lived uh, near those people for three years, and I'm talking with people like you that basically have an entire life experience with that kind of a culture and faith, that, and and they and they have the nerve and to tell tell me. That you also don't know shit and you are a traitor to, to them and the, probably the worst person ever when I'm talking about people like you. I don't care. I, I want to even talk to those people and I will consider them pariahs in my eyes. Those women. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. I, exactly. Because a brown rod is more important to them than anything else in the world. Okay, bitch, get your brown rod, but don't, don't expect anything from me and don't expect any help. Yeah. So, well, this is the thing. This is the problem. This is, this is, I mean, there's so many. Oh, God, I could fucking go on. I could fucking go on. It's so fucking frustrating. Uh, but, yeah, I, I 100% agree with you, man. I agree. It's, it's like they, they want, they, they, will, they will cause the shit and then scream for help when shit goes south. This is exactly the problem with the liberals across the board, men and women. The feminist, the feminist man, and the feminist fucking woman. They will cause the shit. They will like, oh, oh, we must respect. We must do, 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 do. Then when the shit goes south, help us. Help. <laughs> Who's here but, to uh, help? <laughs> by the way, I have came to a point where I've, where I've tell directly the face. Yeah. That the thing that infuriates me the most about the uh, about those women that are going to the Middle East with, with their Muslim lover boys, Habibis or whatever, I mean also about the woman from my own country, is that I have to pay from my taxes thirty three thousand pounds because that's that that's the what is to pounds uh, equivalent 
for rescuing the stupid sorry asses. Fuck you know. Fuck you know. Yes, from my taxes. Dude. And, 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 and I have just uh, even told them for, for more annoyance, I know that it will never happen. That those women, uh, just, just, just uh, for the sake of men, they're living in my own country. Should be, should be tattooed with a little crescent moon in the play, uh, on their forehead. A little crescent moon in the place where the Hindu women would have their dots there. You know those <laughs> bindis. Or bindis, yeah. Uh, and and you know why? Oh, because all the men should know what those women were doing in their past. Because I will tell you, I, I admit that in my culture. If a woman is, was dating a Muslim, or was with a Muslim, uh, if most men would know, if she wouldn't have the have any uh, any way to cover it up, they would never marry her. They would ah. never take her seriously. <laughs> yes. Damn, dude. Uh, That's some harsh uh, fucking dictatorial shit you're throwing down right now. Uh, uh, but uh, the state will not discriminate her. The state will not do anything like that. But women in Poland that were with Muslims are looked down upon. <laughs> I admit that, and uh, yeah. uh, most men are simply just. Yes. I I will admit that, but 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 I'm 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 basically offended that uh, the most important thing for them is their uterus and nothing else, and they are accusing us of of, of being sexually starved perverts. Yeah, uh, fuck you know. But when I'm talking about th those important things, like with you now, I, I'm la I was laugh about it. I say okay, okay, I will never. I will not. not They'll never laugh again, but my revenge will be that I will not shake a finger if something <laughs> happened to them. Yes, exactly. This is my revenge. The world being, don't, don't care. Don't give a shit. Dude, it's been a pleasure again. I'm going to end this because Roger started his stream. I want to actually sit in and listen on, on what he's saying as well. Uh, but uh, thank you again, MC. You're a champion. Thank you, Steve, for coming on for a quick uh, little update as well. And uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'll uh, I'll probably do another one in a couple of, in a day or so, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, and... it was a pleasure to talk with you and say what I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. It's so frustrating, man. It's so fucking frustrating. Anyway, thank you, dude. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night, ladies. Thank you, too, and good night. Bye -bye. Okay, boys and girls. It's us again. It's you and me and, and the 30 people. Big up the 30-odd people in the chat uh, or in the stream. 34. Big up the 34. Guys, uh, Roger started his stream. I think it's best for us all to uh, mosey on over there. There's just so many, so many things that are just fucking frustrating when it comes to these, these this religion of Islam and just the shit that's happening in the West right now. There's just so much crap that is just happening that is just infuriating every fucking day. Uh, and uh, and that's why I have to occasionally go to my happy place. That's Amy K's channel, if you guys don't know. But anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out. It's been awesome. Let's all go to Roger's and see what he's got to say. Big up everyone in the chat and, and um, MC and... Steve in the panel, and it's been lovely, it's been awesome, and don't forget, um, whenever a Muslim comes near you, just tell them, tickle your ass with a feather. Ciao. <laughs>